I wonder if that's going to pull about from the player pool of some of the console players out there. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't. I'm, it's weird saying because most of like I don't know. It's like the people that I know for the most part are like me. Yeah, and despise you're, you're the PC. Friends. Exactly. Yeah. Hold on. They're like I ain't playing people like you crap. What the hell? Yeah. I thought you <laughs> yeah, they hate. They, they, well, no. I mean, there are people like me. They just they don't like uh, like the PC stuff. So. <laughs> but there are people to play Destiny only because it's on console this whole entire last three, two or three years, right? So if yeah. you were a PC player, you had to play it on console, right? So there yeah. is got to be a certain segment of PC players that, that are playing it on console, probably well, early adopted too. And then I I don't know if they're gonna pull from the from the console base. It's gonna be well, guys. Yeah, Don. I don't mean to cut you off, but I am going to anyway. I'm just want to welcome everybody in the chat to the pregame you know don don man he's like a waterfall once words start coming out of his mouth he just continues to go so i i just had to hit start streaming at that point in time but what is going on everybody in the chat i hope you're excited for tonight's episode and we have a special surprise uh a uh, uh, a next family member is in the panel with us somebody you you might not have heard for a while unless you check out this this certain channel uh wednesday mornings but do you want to go ahead and say hi to everybody oh wow. hi everybody i didn't realize i was a special treat you're, you're, you're special <laughs> <laughs> what is up you guys happy saturday it's gonna be a fun show Nice. And guys, I hope you do not get a seizure from her picture in the bottom left corner whenever hey. she's talking. <laughs> but that is freaking awesome, yeah. <laughs> yeah hey. Embarrassing me, bot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. You know, it's funny. Like, we talk so much off the air, but as soon as I go pregame, everybody, uh, you just start hearing crickets. Cricket. Well, yeah. I mean, what else can I say about Destiny? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it does. Her, her, her thing does kick around on YouTube as well. So that's yeah. pretty cool actually. That that, that is awesome. I think that's because I'm I'm capturing it on OBS where if you're just doing the, the And a hangout, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I hear that. What's up? Oh, it's you didn't introduce me yet. Sorry, people might not know I'm here, so Dude, you pretend talk about him. people don't know you're here. Crap, like <laughs> just pretend you didn't hear me. Yo, I Twitter. can pretend to be nuke nu 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 <laughs> Hey everybody's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yo, crap. Twitter was on fire today with my promos because I, I put, you know, I put that that albino rhino on the promo. Let everybody know that you are joining us tonight. And dude, people started sharing it left and right. I think I think people know you're here, man. Yeah, well, that's good news, man. I'm always happy to be here and, and kick in and, and, and help out and, and do the show. I, I enjoyed the next podcast and uh, I'm ready to t talk some games and stuff, man. Always. Uh, I always like the introduction and stuff. I'm really waiting for uh, for you to get to the the. No, no, no. That's always better live. So you know, I would always you know looking forward to that actually. So nice. Uh, I like this might be the first time I've done the show with Mel actually being here too. So that is not Maybe. true. No, so not sorry. True. No. It's no. okay. I forgive you. One other time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, only one other time. Yeah, because <laughs> I think I I hopped in once when you weren't here, and so yeah, it's always good to do a podcast with you guys and Predator too. Like, uh, what's up, Predator? What up, man? What's going on? How you feeling, buddy? Uh, I'm walking, finally. Um, yeah? Last week, I was drugged up and during the show. Man. I was high <laughs> as fuck, man. I, I could hear it in my voice when I went back to listen to, the, to the, some of the podcasts. Next, I was like, oh, man, I was so done. Last night, I couldn't even do the shop podcast because I had already taken my meds when they started like an hour late. Yeah. I couldn't do shit, man. I was like, I'm going to be asleep by the time you guys start. Oh, no shit. <laughs> I tried to listen to the show five, ten minutes into the show. I was asleep, so. Yeah, I haven't taken any pills like today. I'm off now. I'm You're feeling good. You're feeling good. I'm feeling good, man. I haven't taken any. I've been watching some football. I'm See, drinking I'm beer. I'm taking again. your place, Predator. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be an everyday thing on these shows. Someone's mm. gonna be drugged up and lost. Man, Somebody's I was hurting gonna be drugged week. up. Somebody's gonna be injured. Like I don't. Uh, I know crap didn't see it, but um, the Don, oh, the Don. <laughs> The Don turned his knee into a meat fillet. Oh, oh yeah, what about that? <laughs> That's gross. Yeah, I haven't been taking painkillers at all. The only thing they Wait, you turned your knee into a meat fillet, dude. It, 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 it jumped off a cliff again, man. No, I clipped a rock in a corner. The tire <laughs> ripped off the rim. Big, uh, it's not a big deal, but like it basically, as soon as you hit the rock, it split it open. Uh -uh. Oh, okay. The new logo for the next 
podcast is going to be the Red Cross symbol. I see. Yo, it's be- <laughs> I got, I got a bottle. Too. I got a bottle of Vicodin. I haven't took a single one. It was just. Uh, oh man, you know, you, you're going to want to take some of those Vikes, man. Those things are great. <laughs> I can't stand them, man. I can't stand painkillers. I really can't. <laughs> Vicodin, though. I mean, those are barely even qualified as painkillers these days, but they're fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the Don, like the Don lives in crack. Utah, and he's got certain plants that he grows in the back, and he just goes back there and eats uh-huh. the leaves, and gotcha. that's his painkiller right there, man. Soaks some olive oil, rubs on the wound. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, guys, I, I'll just let everybody know: uh, K Mega and Dark Otimus are, are not going to be on the show today. K Mega is is dealing, you know, he's got to do life issues and stuff like that, and. Anybody who follows next podcast, you know, uh, life issues definitely come first with, with this squad. So um, when it comes to K-Mega, he won't be in. And Dark, I actually kicked him off of the show until he decides that he's going to stop wearing those sandals that, that kind of like cover the big toe. Those those San Francisco Oh, my gosh. He's wearing, he's wearing the big toe covers? <laughs> yeah, Dang. yeah. But he's trying to build an igloo to live in. So he's wearing these sandals and trying to build an igloo in Southern He also California. rubs Rogaine on his chest. I don't understand that, dude. <laughs> It's probably it's better weird. than Crocs, though. So, oh goodness! If you're out there wearing Crocs, you might not want to do that. <laughs> you already get booed in the chat from Randall Thor. Wow! What? <laughs> <Man. I'm> like, <laughs> Wait, is that how you introduce Crap when he's on here? You know what? I like the fact that Crap is clickbait for our, for our show. We just put the fact that Crap's going to be here, and everyone just retweets it. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, hey, man, well, there's crap or whatever, you know? I mean, I'm kind of – I do that anyway. You should have put, like, boom, pow, crap, he's going to be here. Make it time. Make it time. <laughs> well, yo, crap, I, I, I was telling uh, Don and Fred um, before you came in uh, with – you know, because we're going to talk about Shadow of War, you know, uh, hashtag Soupgate, all that good stuff. And I was like, dude, if, if I had more time, I was going to do the intro – with like the the teaser kind of like commercials for the Xbox One X and then the commercials for the PS4 Pro and the song over it is going to be one of these things is not like the other one of these things is just not the same <laughs> that, that might be for a future episode I might I might keep that you know oh there we go I'm, I was looking for our topics that's that's what I mainly use my iPhone for it's for FaceTiming oh snaps and the topics every saturday so oh my god you're such a liar you're always on your phone oh okay twitter too but uh twitter doesn't count like uh, i'll do twitter on the computer uh on the phone um he doesn't put his phone down unless he's leaving the house and then he just so happens to forget it you need to talk don't don't you don't you oh snaps you really need to talk about who doesn't put their phone down she's not in denial though that's the difference yeah (laughs) i'm addicted (laughs) All right, Don, we're going to have a talk after the show. <laughs> hey, man, we keep treating with people. You can't get rid of me. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go grab some coffee so we can get it started. Oh, so you're going to grab me some coffee? That is amazing, lady. I really appreciate Screw that. you. Get your own coffee. <laughs> well, right get your own damn coffee, x uh, uh, Well, I can't. I'm Four, the host. I have, to, I, have, I have to stay here. I have to hit buttons, you know, uh, pull levers, stuff like that. Crap, you know the deal, man. I, I yeah, think, I know. Dude, crap! I, I this is this is really funny. I think you have had the most special appearances on the next podcast. You are like the man, head and shoulders above anybody else who comes on and hangs out with us, man. And I gotta say, I re- I really do appreciate it. I have a lot of fun when you come on the show, dude. Yeah, hey, that's no problem, man. I like coming on here and and kicking it with you guys. It's always it's always a good time, you know. I, I enjoy doing these podcasts and stuff. It's uh, it's something that probably people notice, uh, especially with my channel and stuff. I, I don't take any of it seriously. You know what I mean? Like a lot of you people just, man. you know, yeah. like you guys probably know better than most that um, I don't really, you know, it's just all funny for me. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, don't uh, believe him. It's all serious, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's not, it really, like, it's it's just, it, it, I have a good time with it, man. Like I remember one time Rand Outdoor speaking to him. He just, he, he came up with this weird uh, name for this video, right? It was like uh, something about um, Uncharted 4 or something like that. And and I was like, man, I'm gonna use that, and I actually used that exact title for my video. Like, you know what I mean? It's just it's fun for me. I have a good time. Podcast is is something that I'm I enjoy doing. Uh, talking video games is something I enjoy doing. If you're passionate about something and have fun with it, I say why not do it as much as possible. So yeah. uh, as long as I can, I'm gonna be doing podcasts and talking about video games and stuff like that because I'm very passionate about that stuff, and uh, it's a good outlet to do it. So I, I like going to, and doing the rounds sometimes. 
uh, and especially like hitting the next podcast always. So nice, nice. And, and speaking of podcasts, man, I I have to say I. I guess I, I I did a guest appearance on Xbox Nation again, and yeah. dude, this past Wednesday, yo guys out there in the chat, if you haven't checked out checked out Xbox Nation from this past Wednesday, you definitely got to check it out, dude. It was a fire <laughs> show. Man. We talked for Halo for the first like forty five fifty minutes. That's why I love so. it. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't we're just like, like we weren't like loafing around <laughs> trying to find stuff to talk about. Everybody had their opinion, and they were really trying to voice it yeah. at that point in time. So it was really good conversation, man. Yeah, that's what's always good. What the hell was that? <laughs> I don't know what that was. I, I think that was uh, that was O Snap's iPhone right there. Oh, uh, I forgot okay. to mute it. <laughs> you forgot to mute it. Crap gets yeah. mad at me. I never mute mine. So, like on BGST, <laughs> you'll hear my phone going. <laughs> no matter what podcast, your shit's always going bling bling. It's usually Twitter too. Uh, uh, well, guys, I I think it's about time to get set up. Oh, by the way, O Snaps did not bring me a cup of coffee, so um. There's, you thought I was uh, kidding? Uh, yeah, no, I thought oh. I thought maybe there was a possibility, but it, it, I'm just gonna say it's probably a good idea just to cut you off for, for now. Okay, okay. Don, <laughs> there's, there's a little bit. time where Don is my conscience. Don will tell me, "Hey, uh, bot, shut up right right now," <laughs> and especially with O snaps, <laughs> and then I'm like, "All right, okay, I got you." I'm, I'm, I'm not doing. There's gonna anything. be so much clicking when we once you do that intro. You click on so many things. I will mute my mic. How about that? <laughs> no, That's always a thing. Like, shout out J-Dub, who's in the chat right now, too. Whenever you listen to MC Mornings, if you listen carefully, you can hear that dude. Click, click, click. See, click, what, click, what it is click, secretly, click. us guys that are directing the OBS and stuff, we want the chat to know how much we're working at that point in time. So we leave our mic unmuted, and we just start clicking, like, doing what we have to do. So this way, everybody can hear... How many clicks just for the intro, for the gameplay, all, all that good stuff. We want to know that – we want you know the chat to know that we're putting in that effort to try to make this the most entertaining both visually you know, and, and verbally that we can. So that, that's what I think. That's what I most think. of the time your clicks don't come through on the playthrough, but they do we, – we can hear them for sure. <laughs> no, they come through on the playthrough. Dude, I go back and listen, man. But uh, I, on that note, I don't know. You, 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 guys, uh, okay. you guys ready to check out the intro? Yeah. All right. Let's, let's do it. Let's Intro do it. time, people. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> going on people and welcome to another episode of the next podcast this is episode 67 guys i i gotta say i'm feeling truly blessed uh at you know being able to do 67 episodes still running strong and and seeing the support from the community you guys are absolutely tremendous we have a great show lined up for you uh the first surprise you already heard if you were hanging around for the pregame but oh snap it's Mel is in with us today on the panel. So, oh snaps, would you like to say hi real quick? Hi, real quick. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's gonna be a fun show. Hope everybody has a, you know, a good night hanging out with us. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think they are gonna have a good night. Um, our followers on Twitter, the Xbox community on Twitter, they know we have a special guest today. It is none other. Than the creator of Crapital Foundry, the albino <laughs> rhino himself. I am talking Crap Gamer. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the Crap Gamer, the albino rhino, the king of all game related media. Como estas, bitches? What's up? Uh, hopefully, you guys are all doing great. Uh, it's good to be here and uh, kicking it with the next podcast crew. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Make sure you guys hit that like button. 
and uh, have a good time as always. Nice. He he went he went like police right in the beginning, man, dude. I, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but we we definitely got some hot topics. I know. Um, there's actually a couple things. Uh, I saw somebody on Twitter said like King Neutral versus the Albino Rhino, but it's funny because I feel like we're on the same page with a couple of these to- topics, and it's going to be real interesting yeah. to see if we're going to like tag team go against like two against three. And have like yeah, we can pull an Eiffel Tower. I hear you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, All right there. Well, man. let's I'm... go. Let's go next on the <laughs> list. And he is that um, big gaming media assassin, man, pointing out the bias. Uh, you know, going out and, and and checking like Best Buy and stuff like that when it comes to Xbox kiosks and such. And I am talking about Predator. What's up, man? You make me sound like a stalker, man. <laughs> Dude, you got you got that face paint on. You know the the black and the green. You just like stripe it up and you go into Best Buy. I've seen you, man. I got pictures. No, you haven't seen me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to be back on, man. Happy to be back on with Crap and Mel. I haven't been on a podcast with her in a hot minute. I miss I the coffee, casual. I got. I can't say it straight. Just go. I always miss your podcast, <laughs> but uh, because it's always on early. I've I've caught it a couple of times, but like that's a really good podcast for everybody out there who hasn't tuned into that and. Uh, Don's back too, so yeah, we got some shit to talk about today. So let's get this shit going. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to be careful with the Don because he wasn't here last week, and I, I don't know, he might go off on a rant, just start talking and talking and talking. But speaking of the guy, he is that pink chinchilla wearing fool. I know your lights are flickering because it's time to stand up, show that respect, kiss that ring. The Don. Hey, what's up, guys? I know you all wait for that intro every I week. Do. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, the Don. But not only that, <laughs> Xbox did the intro when the mighty Dodge Omni is racing in the background. <laughs> the Dodge Omni. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> look at look at what it's racing. It's just killing these Ferraris like yeah, like they're nothing. He's, he's man, holy crap! Right that now, is man. funny. Wow, I just noticed that. Yeah. Well, I should have gave you some of my footage, man. You could have used some. Well, definitely next time. Man. Or whenever whenever yeah. you have about 10 to 15 minutes of game footage, man, I can always use it as, like, bonus content. I'll put your name up there, let people know you're the one who sent it in and stuff like that. So, you know, we talk all the time anyway. So I got some really good gear stuff, man. I'm let people know I'm not bad at Gears or Call of Duty, actually. I'm bad at Halo, but not Gears and Call of Duty. <laughs> Dude, just I, I know that I can, I actually can't wait for the new Call of Duty to come out. Maybe you know me, you, and Mel can get together and start you know kicking some ass. Yeah, man. Or like you play you play Halo a lot, man. I'd I'd love to play Halo. Just like do pubs, you know what I mean? Like get like rank up and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like I have I haven't really had a chance to play much because whenever I play Halo, it's usually like game night or something where we just do the private matches and you yeah. don't rank up. So man, yeah, I would actually love to play some. Uh, some halo sometime with you guys nice nice i i am i am definitely down although destiny 2 has taken up a lot of my life and i know oh, he's that, a that good you know some somewhere out there mooch is like he like he's 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 doing the fist bump he's like yeah i got him but yeah so <laughs> it's so funny because on crossfire man like i i went in on mooch so many times about destiny and i i feel guilty man when i turn on my xbox and I see, like, the last game I played was Destiny 2. I, I just want I want Mooch to know out there. Yeah, like I, I think about those moments when I when I go when I went in on you about the game, man. My my bad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but like I said, we have a bunch of topics, and um, let's let's get into something uh, like uh, I'm kind of known for, which is the Halo news first, um, because to me this this is a very important thing it is kind of like it's 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 xbox's flagship title flagship franchise you know when you go out there and you talk to casual gamers people out in stores that are looking at games and stuff and you say you know what's the first game you think of uh when i say xbox you know nine times out of ten they're gonna say halo so 343 has come out and and um they announced that they're doing a xbox one enhancement for the master chief collection and it kind of threw me for a loop a little bit coming in 2018 the master chief collection is going to get the xbox one x enhancement now at first like i i feel like all first party um xbox one you know games uh, are they should definitely get the 4k xbox one x enhancement because it is their hardware but i believe uh crap is the one who kind of brought it up as i was thinking about it as well in, in twitter on the dm 
about Halo 6 possibly not coming out in uh, next year, 2018, which I feel it it needs to, man. Yo, crap, what do you think about the, the Master Chief collection getting that 4K update and and what do you <laughs> well, think I, about Halo 6, man? Like, well, I feel I felt like Halo 6 needed to come out next year. It needs to come out next holiday. Uh, that's when the PS4 Pro will probably get a price cut. I know a lot of people predicted a price cut this year for the Pro. I, I disagree with that. Uh, if you look at the bundles they're offering, they actually raised the price, and it's only $50 less with the game than the uh, Xbox One X. Uh, Sony it doesn't really fear the Xbox One X at this point um, because a lot of people just assume that Sony's like, oh, it's all about power. Sony's all about whatever suits them, right? It's true. So <laughs> you, guys, you guys might notice that. So uh, as far as like Microsoft is concerned with the... I, I was surprised with with this comment, right? Because they're they're doing Halo 5. They haven't touched the Master Chief Collection in forever, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that, that's still some buggy stuff. And they haven't mentioned it, no updates. They said they're done updating it and all this stuff. And now they're like, hey, we're going to give it the 4K treatment and fix the servers and all that kind of stuff. And it just had me kind of scratching my head a bit, like, hmm, that's a little bit odd timing. Maybe the reason they're doing this is because Halo 6 isn't on schedule and it's not going to come out next year. Dude, it, sound, it sounds like something that you would kind of throw in there. I mean, the game's already done. You just have to go back in. I mean... I'm not thinking of this as they're going into Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4 and putting in 4K textures uh, and all that good stuff. I'm looking at, well, from what I'm thinking, it's going to be just a, a, an up res to native 4K across the board with that game. But Probably. I, I definitely, I got to agree with you. It sounds like something that you would kind of throw in there if your, your next project isn't kind of like on track right now, man. Yeah, I agree 100%. I think, uh, you know... It's probably, I mean, again, this is just me speculating, but it makes sense that they kind of rushed it because it reminded me when uh, Uncharted 4 got delayed and they're like, but we're going to have the Nathan Drake collection. Mm -hmm. And it, basically it was the Nathan Drake collection was just the three games kind of slapped together up res and none of the multiplayer or anything like that. I was like going to say, and no multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, no multiplayer. It was like, you know, <laughs> sounds to me like Microsoft. And if you just look at what Microsoft is doing, and I'm not a hater because I like Microsoft, but. A lot of the stuff they're doing is just like putting band-aids on everything. Mm -hmm. It's like the Titanic and they're trying to cover everything with band-aids, right? Like <laughs> we've got Zoo Tycoon coming back and Disney Adventures. And we're gonna <laughs> the Master Chief collection that we released in 2014, we're gonna fix it. Woo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, okay, great. You know, like to me, that's just kind of a band-aids on the problem. And they really and I do feel that the games are coming, but Oh man, how do you not have a Halo out next year? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. is Halo Four or Halo Five gonna last that another year? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, is it like in the multiplayer? Like, out of sight, out of mind with gamers these days. You know. Well, crap. Um, see, here's the thing: it, with the announcement of of the the Xbox One X enhancement for the Master Chief Collection, it's all well and good. And if if Halo Six, if it's not coming out next year, there there. There should have been a two-step process, in my opinion. Now, I feel Halo 6 needs to come out. They need to have that lineup that'll shut up any of the haters. Like, they just can't deny it. We already have a great lineup that we're looking forward to. You know, State of Decay, Sea of Thieves, Crackdown, Forza Horizon 4. And you put that Halo 6 in there, man, that just solidifies everything. But if it is not coming out in 2018, not only should they have, you know, that... that um, up res or the Xbox One X enhancement for the MCC and, you know, server fixes, all that good stuff. But they need to add more content to Halo 5 as well. And I know that sounds, that might sound weird to people because they've already put so much into that game. But the thing is with, with Halo, they're trying to move it forward as well. You know, Spartan abilities, all this good stuff. And when you go back and, and you start touting the Master Chief collection again, then you have that part of the Halo community that's all about Halo 3 all the time. And, and yeah. they come back with, with their microphones and their Twitter and they start going nuts again. So, like, I, I feel like they needed to couple those together if, the, if you know, Halo 6 was going to be delayed. What do you think, Crap? Um, I think it's weird because they let Halo 3, which is arguably the biggest Halo of all time, mm -hmm. just kind of pass by without much of recognition. If they were going to do something, then they maybe should have done like a pure anniversary for that and then release it. Um, it seems to me like this is totally rushed, you know, and I like Halo. 
Um, but again, like some of the older Halos, they don't play as great for me. They're they're kind of outdated without the the sprint and stuff. If mm-hmm. you ever go back and play, like we were, I was playing Halo Five the other day, and we were doing the Halo Three playlist. There's no sprint. So sluggish, man. It is. It's so slow, and it's like you can't climb up on stuff, and you can't. It just, uh, you know what I mean. I know there's those purists, quote unquote, and they're like, they must hate me when I say this, but I like the faster paced Halo. You know, it's like to me, it's much better. Um, although I did like the Reach gameplay, except for that little shield dealy that they used to do when you go to kill them, they'd like do a little shield and you couldn't. Oh, kill where them they punch the ground? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then their friend would come out and they would, <laughs> they would like hit you in the back. You know what I mean? Like that used to piss me <laughs> off. Um, but I actually really liked the Halo Four multiplayer as well. Uh, unfortunately, when they did the map packs and made people pay, none of my friends were wanting to pay for them, so it kind of screwed me in a way as well. So I like what they did with Halo Five. Um, <laughs> I think that they're probably going to delay Halo 6. Um, and then some people are like, well, it's not even announced. but I, And that's true. But they probably would have announced it if it was coming out. Or we would be about, we'd get it. If, if they announce it next E3, will four months be enough? Probably. But I'm still not sold that they're going to announce it because they have had some turnover there. And uh, people really complained about the Halo 5 campaign. Maybe they had to redo the whole thing. I don't know. You know what I mean? More... Uh, Master Chief, less lock. Sorry, K Mega. Uh, <laughs> you that, know. That's probably why Mega's not in. <laughs> Yo, it's yeah. a nice show, man. You so don't what I really it. want is a Master Chief with maybe some gray armor and a blue visor. Can I get that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, <laughs> no, I was gonna say uh, let, let, let's go down, let's get across the panel here, and um, I, I know that Don has a, a difference of opinion when it comes to this. So guess what, Don? Because you weren't on the show last week, I'm going to have you wait just a couple more minutes. And we're going to go to Predator. Yo, Pred, what do you think about the Master Chief Collection getting the, you know, the Xbox One X enhancement? And what do you think this has in terms of in, in relation to Halo 6 and, and the possibility of Halo 6 either coming out in, in 2018 or getting pushed further down the line? What do you think, man? I don't think they correlate with each other. I think maybe they just wanted to fix Master Chief Collection and get that shit out of the way because it was kind of like a um, a sore spot, how that game launched, and they wanted to fix it. Um, I'm glad they're doing it. Um, I'm, I'm past Master Chief Collection. I'm not a huge Halo fan like you are. Where I pick it up every day outside of <laughs> Destiny like you do. But, I mean, I'm glad they're fixing it. I mean, that, that that's something that should have been done back in the day um, when it was released and they realized they had a bunch of issues with it and then they released Halo 5 after that so I don't think they correlate with each other I think they're just trying to fix the game because it was fucked up now as far as um, Halo 5 being delayed um, I'm going to take I I can go on either side of the fence of this I actually don't mind them delaying it if they're going to make the game great um, there's other options they can make with this as well. Maybe they're not coming out with a Halo Six. Maybe they're coming out with a spinoff of, of, of the Halo. No, series. no, we we have a saga that we have to complete here, and, and no spin. Man, you're turning into K Mega right now. Talk about spinoff. <laughs> I'm just, I'm you're just gonna have like options the, out there, you're gonna have so like Locke's like, childhood as a video game and stuff like that. I'm just Come throwing on, options man. out there. It doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be true because <laughs> none of us really know. I'm just like you know you look at it this way. If they don't come out with it, what are they gonna release next year? And I mentioned this, I think, last week, too. If they don't come out with this game um, in 2018, mm-hmm. what are they going to release over the holiday, the, over the, like, the October, November time? I already have a feeling. I already know what they're going to release. Um, here's my pitch. They're releasing State of Decay 2 and Crackdown 3 early next year. Late it's going to be Forza Horizon 4 and uh, Sea of Thieves. And super Put lucky tell DLC. Yeah, super lucky. <laughs> and, and whatever other Connect Star Wars or Connect oh games they can release that are retrofitted to work on a controller, but they're going to be in glorious 4K. Yeah, the thing is, like, if that's their biggest holiday game <laughs> next year, obviously we're not going to get a Gears for a while. I don't think we'll see Gears till maybe 2019. But and and if that's the case, that means they kind of have to do Halo next year. But if they don't do Halo next year, that means everything else gets kind of pushed back. They're not going to release Gears. I- they're going to piss Halo. me off, man. You don't give me my gear. <laughs> they're going to release both of them in the same time frame. So, um, they, I, they probably I, wouldn't release both in the same year. Yeah. You know? uh, so, yeah, that would really mean, like, if you're a Gears fan like me, whoo, man, that, that would annoy me because I'm expecting the next part of that to come out in 2019. Or, you know what I'm I mean? Thinking, so, I'm thinking they're going to drop Fable next year. That's me. That's, yeah, they could. 
that's this outside the, the the box, but I think they're gonna. They could announce it. I I don't know. Maybe they have it ready. I'm not sure. It's almost. I, I mean, it was pretty much done anyway. I mean, like the game was already there. They had to change a few things. Obviously, like it's been what almost a year. It'd be what almost a, two years by then. Almost what since they canceled the game. Yeah, um, and the, the whole idea was to save the assets and make a proper Fable Four, but they ended up closing the studio. But I mean, they could uh, uh you know, there's the Studio Gobo stuff and. Uh, there's mm -hmm. other rumors going on as well, so it's not unfathomable. And and Phil likes the IP, uh, so we. I mean, we'd have to see. They could have some internal teams helping with that as well. Because you know, outside um, of State of Decay next year, um, what I was about to say, Super Lucky's Tale DLC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, wow, you State let the Don get into your head with that one. I man. did. I did. Um, uh, well, State we, of Decay. We know what's down, coming up next year, right? State of Decay, Decay Crackdown, Sea of Thieves, uh, Forza Horizon Four. Now. With those games, like, and, and we're we're barring any type of delay, uh, all those games coming out in 2018, do you you still feel like they need a a Halo? They need like that 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 stake, that flagship franchise to yeah, come out next year as well, you know, right? If, they, if that's the case, then yes, we need Halo Six next year, or at least a Halo, whether it's a spinoff of it or not, which I know you don't want to hear, but um, we'll get that Russian well, PC Halo, like. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you can't like go into a holiday next year and not have Halo. You know, like you need um I know there's great graphical showpieces for the Xbox One X, but you need something that you can't get on other consoles. You know, like and to be honest with you, as much as I'm lo loving Sea of Thieves and looking forward to that and Crackdown 3 and State of Decay, um those aren't graphical showpieces. You know, you yeah. got like the cell shaded and then I like the art direction in those games, but those aren't like whoa mm -hmm. you know what i mean when people play uh um a last of us or uh uncharted and you see the, the 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 realistic graphics and the 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 greens and the forest and the shrubbery people yeah. go whoa you know um microsoft doesn't really have that game halo to me is that graphical showpiece as much as people try to dog it i thought halo 5 looked great you know that was a really good looking game same thing with gears you play those games and you go, whoa, like one of my titles in my videos, right? Like, whoa, you know, and I, it's just, uh, yeah. Your titles and, are killing me lately, by the way. I man. know. <laughs> and you need, and you need that, you know, you need something that actually shows off what the Xbox One X can do, especially next year. So you're just going to have like maybe Forza Horizon 4. Hopefully those guys don't let us down. You but know, then it seems again, like the that, that's based around that cars and stuff out. like that as well. Yeah. Like, I, I see what you're saying with the Uncharted and stuff like that. And, and crap, uh, I know there's times we disagree with each other, man, but I, I am in the same boat with you on this. Like, um, you know, coming around with the Xbox One X, you know, building yeah. the Halo 6 from the ground up with the, the 4K textures and everything like that. Even, you know, they're going back and they're enhancing Halo 5. But there's nothing like developing it from the ground up, knowing what your most powerful piece of hardware is going to do. You know, and, and they'll be they'll be able to do so much more building it that way. So with, with that being said, um, let's go to the developer on the panel, the Don, and let's hear what he has to say about the 4K enhancement for the Master Chief Collection. And what hey, we got this... Mikey Barra in the chat, folks. Woo! Oh, Mike! What's up, Mike? What's going Thanks on, about. Mike? Checking out the next podcast. Oh, the Mike, I just want to let you know. I thought that was somebody just... Pretending to be Mikey. Oh, oh, I was gonna say, it, <laughs> yo, Mikey Barra. Um, we do have somebody on the panel who does an impersonation of you. Oh, snaps! Would you? Would yo, you... <laughs> stop. <laughs> but let let's go to the the indie dev of the year, uh, the Don, and ask him what he thinks about the 4K enhancement for the Master Chief Collection, and um, of course the the server fixes as well. Is this like? Is it too late for this title? And then what what does this mean for like the future? Halo Six? Do you do you think it's still going to come out? Uh, possibly come out next year. Well, first off, to be the indie dev of the year, my game has to come out this year. That's not coming out. So <laughs> I'll make sure that's very clear. Down, that's, what wanna, that's what I want to know. <laughs> well, but, see, guys, you don't know that the name of his game is actually going to be Chinchilla Simulator. Is what oh, it is, man. man. That's going to be nice, dude. Yeah, I want some cloud physics with that. Um, anyway, so <laughs> that getting that out of the way, um, I think Microsoft realistically has a, a, four, a 4K native agenda with anything they have control over. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is really related to if Halo is going to come out next year or, or not. I, I think they're totally independent uh, in regards to that. Um, also when you're working with customers, you can't sometimes like when you 
mess up so bad with a customer, right? Your customer base is pretty upset for a while. And you can try fixing things right away, but to be honest with you, they're just going to be mad at you anyways, no matter what you try to do. Sometimes you have to let your customers kind of calm down a little bit, and then you can go back and readdress things. Um, and I really feel like that's the case with Master Chief Collection. I'm waiting for that. Basically, the hate there was surrounding Master Chief Collection, how it was treated, you know, how it was presented. And basically, just let that hate kind of calm down. They were going to address it. Now they're actually addressing it. Why not address it when there's a 4K man mandate within... I'm assuming this, so Mike's obviously listening, so he'll either laugh into himself or not. Um, but the, the reality is, you know, anything like looks like Microsoft has control over, they're pushing that whole 4K agenda. That's what I'm seeing, right? Okay. Or at least enhancement. Mm -hmm. um, anything that, that's kind of exclusive to them that they don't really have 100% control, I notice those are the games that are not quite getting that enhancement that I'm seeing. Um, like, you know, if you take Rise, for example, you know, Mike actually actually worked on that title. There is a PC version of that game right now that you can run at 4K, but you're not see, you haven't seen any announcement on that. And you know, you know, rumors go Cryotech and Microsoft didn't have, you know, they didn't end on the best terms, right? Yeah. You know, so that's a perfect example of a game that that's eligible for it, but it's not getting it. And that game didn't piss off a bunch of people. You know, a lot of people can actually kind of like that game. Um, you know, they, they wish there was more added to it, but, you know, they still like it. So I, I kind of look at this situation with the Master Chief Collection. I don't think it's related to the l latest installment of Halo or not. Um, I think a, more of a tell sign is if we got a Halo 3 remaster, that would be a little bit more of a tell sign that, you know, we're not going to be getting well, the, the latest. But the Halo 3 oh. remaster, would it came out, like, you know, would it came out already, right? Like Yeah, that's what I'm 2014 was when the Master Chief Collection came out. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm saying. Like, if we're not getting that, mm -hmm. then I, I don't think that's really related. I, I, I think they just have they have a title that's in their portfolio that they can make 4K, um, and you know that's the reason why you're buying an X, so you can play your library at a higher resolution or other enhancements the developer chooses to do, right? Mm -hmm. And and if you're not dealing with your own first party. How do you expect third party to be on board with everything? So you have to you have to double down on your own stuff. Yeah. So you know that's the way I kind of look at it. No, that's a good point, Don. I do want to also point out that they could be expecting other people to jump on board with Xbox with the X for the first time this gen. Mm -hmm. um, with you know what I mean, and so they want they want it up and running well. You know, um, I, I can I can see that aspect as well. Again, like when I came up with that idea. It wasn't something that was written in like stone, you know what I mean? It was just a theory of mine, like, hey, if they're actually gonna do that, then maybe there's a possibility we won't see a Halo come out next year, like hey, a mainline series, you know? See, I still I just because I I still think a, a a new Halo needs to come out next year. And here's the reason why. Baby. I agree. I, I love what, what Phil Spencer has done. All right. He has First of all, he has uh, taken that whole hardware thing that people have been dealing with. Anybody who's been a day one Xbox One uh, gamer who has had fun playing the games and stuff, you know the deal if you're on Twitter and stuff like that. Just the the big gaming media and all the stuff that they have said about the system that you enjoy and all that good stuff. So Phil came in and he corrected the whole hardware. He's got the S, which, you know, um, upscales to 4K, the UHD, all that good stuff. Great price point, entry level for an Xbox One uh, to do multiple things. And then you have the X, which is the most powerful console. So that whole power stigma and everything like that since 2013, out the window, right? But here's yeah. the thing. With going through all that, I feel like um, Xbox uh, has... People have questioned their identity, right? And then you had stuff like Scalebound, Fable Legends, uh, those cancellations and stuff. Whether people uh, agree that it was... It was the right thing to do at that point in time with dealing with the devs and then, you know, the Fable Legends thing and stuff. But people are questioning kind of like the identity of Xbox. So I feel that after you've taken care of the hardware, that very next year, you got a nice, nice lineup. It's not only just the State of Decays and stuff like that, but we saw at E3, it was like, uh, what was it, 42 games that were shown? And, and basically all of them coming out within that E3 to next holiday. So you have game, the smaller games like Ashen and stuff like that to really fill out the year. 
But you need, I, I feel like you need that flagship, you need that hammer to slam it down so that, you know, it makes that lineup absolutely airtight as qu quite possibly the best lineup coming out, you know, this generation. Well, yeah, here, here's the thing, Bot. This year hasn't been, like, fantastical in the first party front. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's not stuff out there, but, you know, um, compared to previous years of the Xbox One, it's not as good. Next year's lineup, just when you were thinking, like, just by what we would normally get, right? Just assuming every third year we get the Halo. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then it's Forza Horizon's turn, too. So you think Crackdown 3, you think um, State of Decay 2, you think uh, Sea of Thieves, you think Halo 6, and you think Forza Horizon 4, that beautiful. is probably one of the best lineups in the history of Xbox, right? Oh, not yeah. to mention the smaller beautiful. stuff. Yeah, not to mention the smaller stuff or maybe a surprise something in there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That, to me, is an absolutely phenomenal lineup. And that was what I thought would really kind of make up for this year, which I didn't. You know what I mean? There's a lot of multi-plats and stuff like that, and, and that's great. Uh, you know, I, I would have loved to play Crackdown 3, but, you know, if they needed more time, they needed more time. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I was still holding out hope. You know, I figured, like, to me... I want a lot of people go, oh, well, all Microsoft has is Halo, Gears, and Forza. That's why I buy an Xbox, folks. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what else, how else to put it. That's why big, I buy an I'm Xbox. I'm a big exclusive guy. I mean, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, snaps. Uh, what do you think about this whole, like, uh, Master Chief collection? Them going back, it's a 2014 game. Uh, they're saying they're finally going to fix the servers. They're going to do the 4K update. And, and what do you think about, like, what, what does this announcement, th is it linked that. with Halo 6? If this is really Mikey Bar in the chat, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what you're on right now. <laughs> no, um, I mean I feel like we need a, a Halo Six next year, um, and I want to go back to what Crap was saying earlier about the the Halo Five gameplay. It was faster. It was a lot more fun, and we all know that's what got me into Halo because I wouldn't touch like the earlier games of Halo. I never played Halo before Halo Five. Xbox would talk my ear off about it, <laughs> and I'd pretend like I was listening, but I wasn't. Um, and she's that's very what good really at that, got by me. The way. Yeah, I am. I actually have so many years of practice, so um, I, I would never play it because it was just so slow compared to, let's say, Call of Duty or something like that. Um, and then when Halo Five came out, I really got into it. Now, as far as enhancing the Master Chief Collection, why are we taking a step back? We need to take a step forward, and then you can kind of go back and fix the other things. I'm, I'm really kind of disappointed. But why, why are we speculating that this is not going to be coming out next year in the first place? Uh, I mean, it's not confirmed, so I'm just curious. Uh, just, uh, I, I thought. Well, it was my original thought, really. Like when I saw it, I was just like, hmm. I wonder if them kind of because it seems like it was rushed. Mm -hmm. to, hey, you know, we need some kind of Halo, uh, you know, next year since there might not be. In my opinion, um, that was my thought that there might not be a Halo Six next year, so that they're trying to kind of get the other Halos up to date. But Don makes a good point too, and that you know they're just trying to update all their stuff, which I get that as well. Who knows? There could be some kind of PC Windows Ten. Uh, thing in the works too like i'm, I'm definitely yeah. thinking that i'm thinking that the master chief collection will be going to pc uh that that would be the one place and and watch out for that a anybody in the chat halo fans uh all that good stuff like when it comes to this master chief collection uh xbox one x enhancement watch for anything windows 10 related cross play related because that would be the title that they experiment with Halo crossplay from <laughs> console to PC. Yeah. If they do that, make sure it's not a it's an option and not a thing where you're forced um, to play against people with keyboard and mouse. Man, I don't. That, that is play. the one franchise I am worried about when it comes to crossplay and mouse and keyboard. All right, that's where. Dude, I already avoided like the plague on Gears Four, man. <laughs> like when they first did that, I didn't go back to Gears for months. Can you choose you know to I mean? avoid people who are playing on uh, PC? Can you like shut off crossplay? Um, on, like on okay, okay, when you play Gears, right? You can play against people that aren't on PC, but they did kind of take away the option to where you could just do like casual team death or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is what I used to do. Now it's like you had like that's mixed with PC players. I, like you hardly find any PC players, but still, you know what I mean. Every time that, for the most part, whenever I played against them, it seems like they their first to get to the to the weapons to the 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 sniper and man they just woo <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, yeah. 
uh, that's what I worry about. And they announced this crossplay with Halo Wars 2, and I play Halo Wars 2, and I'm like, I have okay. not played it. I don't, you know, I don't know if I would it's good, get into but, it. But if you have a mouse, you have an advantage over somebody that's using a controller on a on an RTS. Mm -hmm. That was, I thought, the original reason why they didn't allow crossplay to begin with. Yeah. Right. And now they're adding it to the thing, and to me, that doesn't really make sense. Like, I'm just worried because I can remember with like when they were doing Fable Legends. They were like, yeah, you're not even going to know if the other person's on PC, right? <laughs> it's like, like oh, wow, I, and I heard that, that I heard that might be the same thing with Sea of Thieves. Like, I would rather just play against people on Xbox. Um, you know what I mean? I know that might be looking at me as like a monster or whatever, but I just would much rather just play with people on Xbox. Uh, no keyboard and mouse, no kind of weird stuff, just controller versus controller. And uh, you know what I mean? Let's just see, see what happens. Mm -hmm. That's what the yeah, parties I... are for. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, snaps. What did you say? Oh, that's what we have parties for. <laughs> Join up with their friends yeah. and avoid the uh, PC like the plague. Well, you know, it's one of those things. I think the industry is just going to fix itself. Like, you open it up, right? Like, you open up to all these developers, and, you know, some are going to be excited. Some are going to experiment with things they, they shouldn't. And, and the player base is going to speak out against it, like, when it happens, right? You mm -hmm. know, Crap's doing it right now with, with Gears, right? You know, he's being forced to play his favorite mode with PC players, and he's not a fan. And guess what? He walked away. Guess what? That's many potentials of microtransaction with gears that the coalition just lost or Microsoft just lost, right? So mm -hmm. they have to find these ways to balance these sort of things. And this is one of those things like if you bought the game, you're like, oh, vote with your wallet. No, vote with your playtime. If you don't like these sort of things being applied, I would recommend everyone at least try it, see if they like it, get an honest opinion. If they're not liking what's going on there, then just don't don't play it. And eventually, you know, those player bases will drop. If the player bases will drop, the developers are going to start realizing that maybe this is kind of an oil and vinegar thing, and they won't mix well. Um, and I, I just think the, I think the whole death of PC versus console kind of debate. I, I think the market will fix itself if you just let the developers do what they want and they may screw up, let them screw up mm -hmm. um, at, at that point. And I, I think that's what Xbox is, uh, you know, Microsoft's opinion is we're just going to let the developers figure it out for themselves. Cause what we don't want to do is trifle somebody that has that breakthrough where it is a game that works really well between both platforms. I mean, if you look at Halo, we talk about Halo a lot on this, on this podcast for some reason i have no idea why though <laughs> <laughs> but but if you look at halo halo had all that um you know all those judgments about it right a first person shooter on console you can't do that right mm -hmm. can't do that can't do guys, that. guys uh hold on don save that and, and go right in right after i say this i just want to say guys this this is such a dark topic that the gameplay has gone dark right now don't worry it'll come back <laughs> I just forgot to trim the black part off of my side of the gameplay. So, guys, it will come back on. Just give it time. But, yeah, it, it's what it is. It's such a dark subject that even the gameplay went black. But go ahead, Don. My bad, dude. Well, yeah, I just think it's going to fix itself. Let the, If the developers make a mistake, they'll fix it. And that's just kind of how it's going to go. And I think vote with your time that you play with a console. Yeah. And you know, and go from there. And I personally, you know, I know crap's not a fan of PC or anything like that. You know, you know, PC gaming and, and console, he, he doesn't want to be anything associated with it. And I know people have similar opinions to crap quite a bit, actually. Right. But I also look at PC is they are basically subsidizing the future cost of our next console, the technology they pay for, right. Eventually makes it to us as console gamers and vice mm -hmm. versa. So including them is essential for gaming to kind of go forward. And we kind of have to, you know, one of the best days for Xbox, like all the titles that flooded into the Xbox floodgates was the original Xbox. And there was a little bit more consistency of openness between PC and their console and games came from PC to console. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I want that to, to be there. Right. I prefer console myself. And I develop on my PC, so I, I just kind of look at it from from that perspective. Well, Don, here, here's yeah. something. Here's something crazy with with the Play Anywhere and you know Xbox, uh, you know uh, going into the PC space. You know having these games that you know are exclusive to Xbox also going on PC and stuff like that. Something really interesting was brought up on Crossfire last night as well. It's like, well, you know, you have all these Xbox games. Now remember, I said that Xbox games 
going to PC as well. Mm-hmm. But where are, except for PUBG, where are the PC games coming over here? The thing is, these are w- Xbox games. So there should be something there to kind of like where Xbox either gets the release first and it's a staggered release and then it eventually goes to PC or something like that. It. But it uh, seems like the PC space is getting all the Xbox games. Now, okay, that so, doesn't feel so, right to me, man. Well, okay, so you, you're looking at from individual titles and, and that's that's fine as well. And that will take time. But I look at it, if you look at the Xbox One X support, how many Xbox One enhanced titles they are in comparison to the competition on the PS4 Pro, there, there's a higher number, right? Mm-hmm. Why did, does that occur? That has occurred because offering that olive branch to the PC side, PC side of things, right? It, it, it comes from that. So, you know, we want Xbox One enhanced titles. We want that support, right? Well, part of that is playing playing nicely with the other side. And, you know, I, I think that's what the Microsoft team or the Xbox team understands. And that's that's how I look at it. So those Xbox One enhanced titles, I don't think we would have nearly, and this is just hearsay, but I don't think we nearly have that same amount of support we're going to have at launch if they didn't make those efforts to offer that olive branch to the PC side of things. Damn, olive branch. They gave them the whole olive bush. But anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, man. Like The only thing that's left is, is Halo. And that's why I said when it comes to this Master Chief collection, with the 4K update and stuff, uh, you know, be on the lookout for Master Chief Collection, kind of like uh, Windows 10 news, because I feel like um, <laughs> that's the title that 343 and Xbox is looking to experiment when it comes to Halo having play anywhere and cross-play involved with it. Can uh, yo, any, Anybody agree with me on the panel, or am I by myself on this? Um, well, here's the thing. I don't really so much care about like the the games the the the, that are that are going to like pc as well like i don't care like for me just as a console person and that's the only place i play Mm -hmm. i just want to make sure that i don't have to play against people on pc because if you look at even PUBG, which is a game i'm excited about coming to console Mm -hmm. there's so much cheating in there they're banning people left and right yeah yeah all right that's something on the pc side i don't want coming over yeah like here, here's the thing. When a lot of people ask me, go, they go, "Hey, crap! Why don't you like gaming on PC?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, I get home from work. I, you know, I my PC is in is is in my uh, is in like the office. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> I got you know I got an office chair, and it's like I, when I game, I got a big recliner, and I got a big old you know 4K HDR TV. I kick back, you know, I I you know I, I relax. My friends are all there. Uh, I don't have to mess with anything or, or, or fiddle with anything. You know, everything works." You know, it's like it's such a like a complete experience for me. Um, and plus, with like the PC side, it's like I don't believe. And now I, I'm not 100 percent for sure on this, but I, I'm pretty sure that most PC games, like multiplayer, because I'm a big multiplayer guy, they don't allow you to have lobbies that are like okay, well, keyboard and mouse versus keyboard and mouse or controller versus controller. Like uh, so many people use controllers, I know on PC, but there's no real way to tell. It's, you know, mo- it's if tough. it's a shooter. It's up to Most the people, if they're gonna lock yeah. the lobbies or not. So I mean, you're you're right. You have no idea what they're using. On exactly. The side, so. And so so I like kind of like the even playing field of consoles. We have controllers. They have controllers. Uh, it's kind of a thing. I don't ever want to be forced into a situation where I have to play against, um, you know, somebody using a keyboard and mouse. Like that's yeah. why I've always been kind of strongly against. I don't care about the game thing. Like, play anywhere, fine, whatever. That's doesn't really affect me. I've never downloaded a game from Play Anywhere. Yeah, you know, I, I buy all my stuff digital, and I've never ever used that, and I probably n- never will because I don't really. And my PC is capable, you know, but I, I mean, just that's pe- not. I was that's gonna say for, for people, me. for people who use it, it's a great feature. I mean, you can decide yeah. whether you want to use your Xbox or you want to use your PC for the game that you bought. That that's <sighs> awesome, man. But like, I'm I'm in the same boat with you, man. I I am concerned when it comes to mouse and keyboard and how they're gonna regulate it and. Our, our, our buddy Mike, you know, he said, you know, it's pretty much up to the devs. Xbox is going to coach the developers that they really need to, you know, think about the multiplayer aspect of the game. But I, I feel like there's nothing wrong with putting some parameters in there to make the console gamer just, you know, a little more secure about what is going on with that. 
and and yeah. not leave it up to a developer to developer kind of like situation you know what i'm saying yeah well well yeah that's that's the thing right like an, a, another reason that i don't is because there's a lot of cheating there's a lot of hacking mm -hmm. there's a lot of pirating and as anybody knows um i am 100 i support the industry i've got like 500 games on my xbox one yeah uh, i buy my games i don't cheat i don't hack i don't do any of that stuff and like there were have been times where you know, I, I, I used to play a little bit on PC here and there back in the day, and it was always just flooded with stuff that, like, may, boggles my mind, you know what I mean? And there's not really a service that, like, you know, takes care of it. Mm -hmm. I was you know? one of and, those people who played a lot of PC games, and I cheated, so <laughs> I can't <laughs> exactly. understand. Oh, my, I were like you a Counter-Strike cheater? And all his, my all right, brother and his... <laughs> Go I wasn't. Ahead. But I, I did play a lot of Counter-Strike, and I did start cheating because it was fun, Okay. <sighs> Um, but I don't cheat at games anymore, but Next I can totally understand. This confidential yeah. right here. <laughs> it's I so bad. Cheat. You know what? And you, and you know what's funny? Like the few times that I've been um, maybe harassed on Xbox Live, I send in a report. They send me a thing. Thanks. We've made it. We've made, uh, you know, we've, we've done this. Thanks for making Xbox Live a better place. Literally the only couple times this generation that anything's happened to me, um, you know, <laughs> you're, you're a hacker, dude. <laughs> no, I'm not a hacker, Mike. I'm, not, I, I, I'm against that. I'm, I'm totally against that. You know, I'm, I'm just a console dude at heart. So it, and it's, it's fair to say, like, console gamers, you can categorize as we like the structure. Yes. We, yes. We, we, we like that, right? And, and it's fair to say, and these are just stereotypes, but it's also fair to say PC gamers like the... Uh, less, no restrictions, the freedom, right? So it's yeah, those learning are two that. polar opposites, right there. Yeah, exactly, right? it's trying, it's trying to merge those two. It's, it's a difficult thing. Like, you know, there, there are some developers who are going to be tempted by that, right? Mm -hmm. And there are ways to balance those sort of things. Like, but it takes a lot of experimenting. It's going to take a lot of trial and error for them to get there. And a lot of times, if they don't feel like it's balanced, they're just going to scrap the idea, right? Yeah. So. You know, that's why I say, like, maybe we shouldn't overly be worried too much, right? And, and I know it's like things are changing. We're, we're, we're old school gamers. We've been doing this for, for a long time. This is, are are this you is trying out. to say we're old, like we're stuck in our ways type thing, man? Don't, yeah, we, don't go we, there, man. We're well, kind of get, yeah. we're, we're getting in that place, right? Like there's things we know we like. We've been gaming for a long time, right? And yeah. this is change. And, you know, this is sometimes, you know, like the whole, like, generational console thing is changing for us right now yeah and i'm fine and, with that right like if they want to do the uh like i'll be the first one to admit and this sounds so stupid right because people are like you could just get a beast pc for that i bought an xbox one at launch for 500 bucks i mm -hmm. bought a xbox one s for 400 bucks and i have an xbox one x pre-ordered for 500 bucks right <laughs> so <laughs> within the first four years of the generation mm -hmm. on xboxes you know i've spent 1400 dollars and um and tax mm -hmm. and i've bought 500 games uh you know what i mean and how uh, many controllers have you bought for the for and i bought the elite how many televisions have you bought for that console i bought two con i bought two 4k tvs um yep and i have like six controllers including an elite controller i also bought a, a playstation 4 and a playstation 4 pro hey, hey crap i had a wii u and Can i you have a switch send me some of your controllers i was just say hey hey crap, <laughs> you know, this channel does take donations you know that right crap i'm, I'm just saying i'm throwing oh, it out there man just, you know i'm just saying like i'm a big time i'm, I'm a big time gamer you know what I mean? and I'm, I'm an online gamer mostly so that's why i worry specifically about a lot of this stuff, you know what I mean? And then looking at this, I remember finding this Eurogamer article from 2010, so I know it's old, but it's titled Microsoft Killed PC Xbox Cross-Platform Play uh, Because PC Gamers Were Too Good. And this was, they were playing Gears of War, um, I guess, and they had Gears of War Xbox people versus PC, and the PC dudes were like stomping. I remember that article. I remember that article. Yeah, and so they totally just kind of uh, scrapped it. According to this article, I don't really know um, you know what I mean? Um, it's still up because I have it saved, but um, it's very interesting. And it's like, I personally, <laughs> like, I tried to play Battlefront 2 back in the day on PC, right? And I got hammered <laughs> because <laughs> I'm a controller person and I cannot control, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. it's not for me. So just for me, I don't care that this stuff is doing it or even doing crossplay. Just make sure that I don't have to play with them if I don't want to. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just give you an like, option. You control the, the, a lot stuff, the stuff, the stuff. The stuff that, you know, people, uh, the, the ease of use locks. when it comes to consoles, <laughs> the ease of use when it comes to consoles and stuff, it gives, 
it gives the console and the console gamer its identity, in my opinion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I work hard, man. I don't. I, I just want to kick back and game. You know, exactly. it's like put the game uh, on, and start that, playing. That's it, man. Yeah, I got you. That's not, yeah. I was going to say, well, it, it's a great conversation, and we could probably make the whole show about it, but we do have other topics. So let's move on to what um, uh, Digital Foundry has been up to lately. Uh, well, they came up with a couple comparisons, so we're going to go to the one that's kind of like uh, burning up Twitter right now. Or, uh, <laughs> Is it Soupgate? <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Soupgate, man. Cause yeah, Digital Foundry, I, I love that. They did the comparison with Shadow of War running on the Xbox One X, compared to the same game running on the PS4 Pro. Now, we know that the Xbox One X, uh, it is a beast of a machine, most powerful console. November 7th can't come soon of a, uh, soon enough for a lot of us in the chat, you know, on the panel and stuff like that. But now we're starting to see it's not just resolution, but the improvement in textures and everything like that really, really fleshes out these games and makes them look absolutely magnificent so uh let's hit pred first yo pred um did you check out the analysis between uh you know the shadow of war on the x and on the pro uh what did you think and do you think this is gonna be kind of like the norm for the next like three years or so man yes and yes um <laughs> Quick answers. I, I looked about <laughs> i looked at about like I, I stopped this is a funny thing like i, I, I watched about half of it right and i kind of saw where the direction it was going in um <laughs> And I started reading the comments, which is like, you know, anything on YouTube, when you read the comments on YouTube when it comes to video gaming, it's always like a negative, you know, if you're an Xbox gamer. But this is like the first time I've actually seen a lot of positive stuff. And then, of course, a lot of damage controlling from, from a certain side as well. But, you know, this is going to be the norm going forward. And then like just get used to it, you know. And the, the really fucked up thing about this is, is this was like what the E3 build, I think they were showing. They were comparing it. It was the Gamescom, Gamescom build. build. So like, there's, there's still more that's going to be yeah. shown later on that mm -hmm. we're going to look at when it comes to this game. Um, the next two, two, three weeks are going to be really crazy when it comes to just comparison videos. Um, this Twitter itself, just yeah. the, the, the fanboy, you know, from both sides. You're like, we're going to give it to them, you know, and they're going to have to take it and they're going to push back with whatever damage control they're going to have to, to, you know, to say. But it's going to be really interesting next three, four weeks coming up just based off what I've seen so far this last week. So um, Digital Foundry, you know, they, they typically do a really good job with what they, what they do with their videos. And Oh, we um, will agree to disagree on that one, but go ahead, man. I said <laughs> typically, not always, typically. <laughs> I, I think they go through a lot, I think they go through a lot of work to show the proper analysis sometimes, but I think what really happens is what, is what their, 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 um, the end analysis is what I don't agree with. I think they do a lot of good work with what they try to show you, but it seems like they used to always swing in favor of the, obviously the PC first, mm -hmm. PS4, PS4 Pro, then the Xbox versions of games. And that's going to change dramatically over the next couple of months. Well, fuck, till the 2019 PS5, whenever the fuck that's coming. Uh, 2020, 2021, 2020, man, around, yeah. around there, yeah. PS Pro, 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 or whatever the fuck. I always try to tell people, like, Sony isn't like go. Oh man, we better come out and come out with some new hardware because we're getting beat in the the hardware space. They're not going to do that because they've already got a large install base and they make money off the services and they make money off of uh, the software, just like Microsoft, right? So it's like they're not going to rush out there and go. Oh man, we're getting beat. We better go out and come out with another PlayStation. Wait, like, don't that. have a new console button. Just, just <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Good everybody, to go. Everybody. Right? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, and and the funny thing is, is we've been telling people that this was going to happen when the X came out because the 4K textures and the assets, that was the real yep. game changer. It wasn't so much the resolution. See, Sony kind of had everybody believing into this 1080p stuff and how resolution made you a better gamer. They literally said that. Uh, and what what happened was when they came out with the Pro, which I always felt was a VR thing, right? But they yep. didn't want to go, you definitely need VR. But take it from somebody that's tried the VR on the regular PS4 and the Pro, and there's a big, big difference right? You get sick very much easier on the PS regular PS4, right? Because the frame rate drops and things like that. So oh, hold, on, hold on. Oh, snaps. Is that, is that the problem? Have you been playing PlayStation VR on a vanilla PS4 and that, that <laughs> is what's going on right now? That's exactly what I have heard about. Yeah. Where did you hide the headset? Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, right? So, so the PS4 Pro, what it does is it's a resolution box. 
but it's just scaling a 1080p image. You're not getting any kind of better textures or anything. So it's not yeah. really doing much. You're getting a crisper image, but you're not getting any of the better details and things like that. That's what the X does. That's what I'm excited for. Mm -hmm. Right? It was, oh, had nothing crap. to do with the if resolution. People, everybody... If people have been, like, watching BGST, listening to B at BGST for, like, absolute months now this is what we've been talking about because yes because you know but they sony, say we're crazy <laughs> yeah sony sony had this narrative about native resolution and stuff like mm -hmm. that and now with the pro you have checkerboarding which which isn't native so now like you know the stables are kind of running wild that native resolution isn't a thing but what about the improvement in textures and stuff the stuff that we've been talking about <laughs> For for absolute months now, now you're finally getting to see it, and it's a to me this is a Mike, new. Mike said Mike said he thinks crap's starting to bleed blue a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, there's no chance. There is absolutely no chance of that. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I got a Gears of War tattoo. And, uh, there's there's one way to find so out. We can cut them. I, I gotta get yeah. I gotta get a UNSC tattoo on one shoulder, and then I want to get an Oni tattoo on the other one. And uh, I'll just say I'm conflicted all the time. Is what's well, my happen. next two, my next two tattoos are the um, the Halo UNMC uh, tattoo, and then like a Gears chainsaw. Oh, sweet! You know, Key May's getting a yeah. uh, lock. Tattooed lock. on him. Oh, he's, oh, he's gonna get locked just in time he's for. Head. He's gonna get on, and it's gonna say, have hashtag save lock. And, um, and he's gonna be in pink armor. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh man. Yeah, you that know what? Um, I'm sorry. Hey, man, little Pio Asley. Oh, they do got me in there. I do like PSVR. I, I like VR in general. I, that's why I, I kind of hope that Xbox One X does end Next up picking year. up next year AR, VR. Dude, book it you book know. it i am saying that they're they're yeah. gonna come out e3 and they're gonna talk about like the acer uh mixed reality headset the hp mixed reality headset as uh being able to be used with the xbox one x and they're gonna yeah. have software to show it too i i, I, I was um here's the thing right like originally i was like not a vr person and then when i actually got it for myself it's a it's a thing that i enjoy quite a bit so uh, you know what I mean? That's why I was hoping that the X would, would have that, right. you know. Uh, and hey, I, I I play that Star Trek bridge crew, man. I'm I'm on the Star Trek Enterprise. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm just saying that's like that stuff is cool to me. You know, it's never gonna take the place of what I do traditionally. Traditional, but it's gaming, something. Yeah. yeah, it's something that I like to do for a really cool experience here. You know what I mean? It's um, it's for, a limited thing just because you got a living room. I mean, that's what it boils down to. It's not. Yeah. It's not the hardware. It's it's the our day-to-day -day life living spaces or yeah like the okay here, here's a perfect example like um star wars battlefront has a free vr mode on ps4 right um and it's only about a half hour mission i'm in a um an x-wing <laughs> like imagine that like you're a star wars fan you're in an x-wing and literally you look all around and there's like you're you're in space you know what i mean like it's it's kind of an awe thing it's you know? surreal and so <laughs> it is and so so i like it like i want that but with halo <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, or so like, now you you know how to tug on my or, heartstrings or, with that, man. Yeah, or Forza. You know what I mean? I want those. Things, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would like those options with that. You know, of course, if Xbox had a VR, I would be on that. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have one yet, so well, um, it's kind of the only thing I play on PS4 anymore is VR, pretty much. <laughs> you know, I I'm mean, I'm just being Shalom honest. And since fucking Charter <laughs> Four. All right. Well, um, yeah, I'm just being honest, man. It's the, just the, like that's I don't. You know, it's, it's xbox all day <laughs> no know? doubt no doubt and, and getting back to the xbox thing and and of course the shadow of war with um the comparison and stuff uh this is different than the start of this generation because uh like we said sony did the narrative <laughs> with native 4k but when it came yeah. down to it the games that were on ps4 that were multiply on ps4 and xbox one they had the same textures i i, I didn't see anything where like there was an improvement in textures on the PS4 and stuff, and like I said, on BGST, on on multiple uh, podcasts that we were on, um, all of us, like we we were talking about textures being something really huge in terms of an improvement with the Xbox One X being able to see that improvement. So um, let's let's hit up Don. Don, wh what did you think the about Don? <laughs> <The> Don. <laughs> <laughs> there, we, I think this is the first time I did the intro twice on a show. So. Um, that was for you, crap. By the way, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> I really but, do. 
Don, with you being, you know, a developer and you're trying to complete your game and everything like that, and I know me and you talk about what Digital Foundry does. We, we talk about it a lot, Xbox Live Party, stuff like that. But what did you think about this comparison? Um, and, and do you feel like this is going to be the norm and, and Digital Foundry is going to have to talk about this kind of like the same way they did with Shadow of War, like all the way throughout when it comes to these multi-plot, multi-plats coming to these mid-gen refreshes, man? You know, I I don't know what their motivation is. I'm I'm not thoroughly, you know, they're a critic, right? So I can be a critic of them. I, I'm not a I'm not a fan of Digital Foundry. I think they don't really serve any sort of purpose. Um, and and that sounds a little harsh, but if if you're a consumer and you can't see it with your own, you're not picking up these differences when you're just seeing these games, right? Mm-hmm. Then you don't need me. You don't need people on this podcast. You don't need some YouTube channel telling you to spend your money on this particular platform or not. That's that doesn't doesn't make any sense to me at all. To be honest with you. Um, so yes, texture resolution. The possibility for t- higher level texture resolution is definitely there. There's more RAM. Uh, simple as that. More RAM you have, uh, the more detail you can have. You can have higher level normal maps. You can have, you know, higher level textures. You can have more stuff loaded in the RAM. It just makes sense. Um, what it really comes right down to it. And, you know, and I, I've said this before, you can never develop a system with too much RAM. There's a reason why every time when you hear things behind the scenes, where you hear third party talking to console manufacturers, they want more RAM. They want more RAM. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. basically all our games detail is in RAM. We create high, you know, what I do is I create high resolution meshes, right? Okay. And I can basically take that information and create what they call a normal map, which creates all the detail of whatever character I'm doing in I lower the resolution to be able to work in into a game engine and basically scale that texture down to the perspective hardware that I'm going to need to use. So that's how I kind of look at all this sort of stuff. So when you, you know, I work in AK uh, texture assets right now. To 8K? give people an AK to give people a, a perspective, right? So you know, I've been seeing high level textures. I know what we've been watering down for, for, for quite a while. And mm-hmm. so so I didn't even know what I know what not only what the X is gonna do, I, I know what the the predecessor after the X is gonna look like, right? I get a rough idea as far as all that stuff is concerned. And you know, better textures, better looking games. Um, you know, more uh, GPU power, you can have better ambient occlusion. Um, I know that's something that uh, dealer's been talking about here and there. Yeah. Um, but the dealer hasn't even seen what ambient conclusion is going to look like in games in the future. Like he barely hasn't. Yeah, I know what he has seen, and he I know hasn't what I've seen. I, right. I, but I know what I've seen, and I just, <laughs> like, games are we're getting. We're not even getting the what that can actually do and what our games can make our games look like right uh, yet. So you know, the the future is bright in gaming, and, and I think honestly. You know, this is me going on a limb. I, I don't see the when we go to like another generation above this, right? Or you know, say the Xbox One X two. I don't really see the need for dropping the S. I mean, may not have to manufacture it anymore, but I don't think there's any reason why supporting the S would ever hold back the other two consoles. That's where we're at right now, because realistically, all we're doing is scaling back assets. So, you know, I don't know. So you, if don't think, game- you don't think it'll come to a point like, like say, four years down the line that um, – because I feel like the X will eventually be the entry-level Xbox One. And, I, and I'm giving it like three or four years down the line. Sort of like how phones do it. Like they, yeah, the apps I, I, start drying up and stuff, right? Yeah. Like they, they start not responding. I, we've been going down – honestly, we've been going in this direction for quite a while where, where we – you didn't have to dump it. And I I think honestly where you're at with the base level S console, what, what you're able to do on those consoles now, I I don't really think you're going to have to do that. I mean, we're, we're talking way far out. I mean, if, if that ever ends up being a thing. Hmm. Well, you know, it's, you know, what's kind of interesting was, uh, which you could be onto something there a little bit, Don was when I saw the PS4 pro version of uh, shadow of war, and you see all those textures next to the Xbox One X version. 
I thought this lo this looks a lot like a cross gen game, like 360 to Xbox One. To be honest with you. Yeah, and then but that's you know I mean? how. It looked... it's, but that's how we're not going to see those huge jumps like we saw from like fr base level Xbox to say 360, right? That was a night and day difference, right? Oh, dude! Somebody, the first yeah. time I saw the Call of Duty with the explosions and the and the smoke and stuff on the 360, I was like, "Holy crap! This is, this is amazing!" You know, compared to the original Xbox. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a softer progression going forward. Is what what I personally see uh, in regards to that. And some people are just not going to care. They're not. That's the thing. So that's the reason why you're doing these iterative hard. I think why Microsoft's doing iterative hardware is because they know a certain customer base is just not going to care. They just want to play their game, and if it's two hundred fifty dollars, they're they're going to be happy with that for a while. Right? Now, Don, Don, I got to ask you because you said you know kind of like softer kind of like upgrades, not like the big kind of generational leaps that we've seen in the past. Now, is is this indicative of kind of like the hardware? Because I know. Uh, there's people out there saying that, you know, in terms of CPUs, there hasn't been a lot of jumps moving forward. GPUs, there hasn't been a lot of jumps moving forward. I think AMD is actually doing an incredible on the GP, job. On the GPU market, there's been big jumps. But on the, on the CPU market, it seems like, in general, it's slowed down. Gotten a um, little stagnant. Like. Yeah, and, and, and we're, we got away, I think, on consoles to getting those level of CPUs, mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, in our homes. But And there will be benefits to that as well, but I don't see any reason why that can't be scaled uh, accordingly. Um, in, in regards to that, I just I just see what we have today and way engines are built today that we're going to have a super high level of scalability going forward, right? Uh, you know, as I told you before, I make 8K texture assets. I don't put that ever in a game. I can't, right? There's, there's probably not a graphic card that can handle it, right? Um, but if I do create it, they are there, right? Yeah. So, you know, and that's what a lot of other places are doing. You Shadows of, Shadows of War, you do 8K texture assets as well. There was an article about that, right? Um, and so what they did was basically take the, those resources and they scaled it down. They just scaled it down less for the X than they did uh, the Pro, the standard PlayStation 4, and the uh, Xbox Xbox One. Yeah, yeah, so, you've been talking about you've been talking about this for a long time on this show when it comes to these these textures and stuff and how developers actually create them to their best possible quality. You say you're you're working with AK and then they they scale them down to fit the hardware and and um basically that's what they're going to be doing with the X. And to see this improvement now and 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 to see like the difference between the X and the Pro um it to to me, like I knew this was coming, but do you do you think this this shocked a lot of people out there? I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, fanboys out there that are really freaking salty right now. Even talking about, you know, well they're not four take four K textures all over the place. They're only in certain spots. Well, and and, 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 did, and didn't I mention that on this podcast eight months ago before Digital Foundry even talked about that? You know, like, it, this is the type of thing, like, we're going to get that. Like, it doesn't make sense to make a 4K texture asset for a railing you'll never get close enough to to see the detail, right? Mm -hmm. So you optimize what the, the consumer is going to see on that, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can pull back some of that resource power and apply it to other parts of the game to make the game look better, right? So, you know, games are just going to get looking better. I don't really, you know, and I want to say, like, you're a very customer. Just, just look at this stuff. Just really do look at the stuff and if you feel it justifies your dollar right that experience justifies your dollar then buy it nice. um you know that's you know as creators we got to earn your dollar right as platform providers they have to earn your dollar right and so that's what these companies are doing so you know and i think a lot of what you hear in the ether like the echo chamber of you know f you know hardcore fans of one platform or another you, you really what you see is, you know, people used to listen to this one particular group and they're starting to show their true colors, right? They're trying to say one thing and everything is contradicting what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So their legitimacy is dying on the vine. Like they don't have this legitimacy they used to have anymore and it's hmm, it's so i wonder who you're talking about <laughs> so, 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 so what you're seeing is the shake up right people are like who do i listen to do i listen to this person do i listen to this person right and in and, and my answer is you know it's a I hate to sound like a broken record but you're the expert 
when you look at a particular game and you can see it, that's all that matters, yeah. right? It doesn't matter what anyone else says. It, it matters what, what you see. And that's what Xbox did. They created a console that basically covers that umbrella that's there, right? Mm -hmm. You can, you know, if I'm a creator and I'm doing, I want to do more ambient occlusion versus higher texture resolution, I can do that. But what's interesting is I can do both, right? Nice. And I can cast that bigger net. And if I can cast a bigger net, we got more people that are going to be able to recognize and see what I'm doing. You know, if I Don, just do anti-aliasing, oh, some people don't pick up on that. Don, you know this, what I mean? You know it's going to be really, really interesting. I was talking to uh, uh, NXG Gamer today on, on Twitter, and he is – he is down to be a special guest on the next podcast. I have a feeling it's going to be a really interesting conversation between you and NXG when he does come on because um, I, I could just see you guys going back and forth on this. Uh, but let, let's hit up O Snaps because she's been quiet for a while. Of course, she's been in the chat hanging out with everybody. Huge, huge shout out to the over 130 people watching right now. Woo! Yo, smack that thumbs up button for us if you're if you're loving the gaming topics, you're loving the gameplay. We do have our special guest, Crap Gamer, here with us. But Heck yeah, but the Don, he's really bringing it, man. The Don! The Good job. Don. <laughs> Dude, you're going to have me saying that in my sleep tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please don't. Uh, yeah. oh, it's right it's in the your only, ear. It's the only reason I haven't done MSC in the morning, because I need that intro if, before I call it. <laughs> hey, well, I could do a good impersonation of it. So, I mean, not bad, uh, not bad. It doesn't yeah. compare to your Noof Nukem, though. You're, I know. You fooled me, <laughs> dude. <laughs> um, oh snaps! I I gotta know. Did you see the comparison uh, for the game Shadow of War on the X versus the Pro from Digital Foundry? No, I actually didn't because you know I've been really busy and all that good stuff. Um, but I know you're talking about it. Uh, so if you could actually bring a little of that to light for me, because I know you guys were just talking about it, but you know, when you get technical and Don's talking about CPU and GPU, I get lost. <laughs> um, I'm right out that iPhone when I start doing that. I know. Well, they show, they show shadow of war. Yeah. On the PS4 Pro against the Xbox One X uh, and the texture quality and stuff. And on the PS4 Pro, the texture quality looked like PS2 texture quality, where on the Xbox One X, they were using like high end PC texture quality. So the textures uh, obviously are going to look like better. You saw and... all the pebbles on the ground yeah. on the X compared to like a, a smeared together look like refried beans and Campbell's soup. Like, yeah. So, so they, actually call, they actually called the PS4 Pro textures soupy. Or soup like, right? So then we started the joke soup gate or whatever, because you have to remember, Digital oh, Foundry, okay. they're the ones that really, that really pushed um, weird grass stuff. Gate. Like, I, yeah, Grass Gate. Remember that? I thought that was a joke for the longest time, right? They were like, <laughs> but if you look at the PS4 version of GTA 5, there's more grass right here. And people were actually saying this to me, like, oh, Xbox sucks. It doesn't have the same grass as the PS4 version, and I thought everybody was joking. And you go and check it out, and it's not a joke. Dude, I thought it was a joke, too. I even went to O Snaps at that point in time. Like, I thought it was funny. And then I was like, the more and more I looked in on social media, and that, that time I was on Facebook a lot, right? So I'm looking at more and more of these articles, yeah. like, popping up talking about it. I'm like, they're, they're actually being serious about, like, these four blades of grass over here to the left in comparison to the Xbox that didn't have it there. I was That's like, very oh important, you guys. Those four blades of grass <laughs> are a make or break situation. You snap. I sent you. Exactly. I sent you a picture of the textures. Take a look at it and you'll, you'll have a better idea. I think what everyone's. Well, thank you, sir. I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> it's in the. Uh... The Don. He's a real gentleman. He's like, I'm the <laughs> Don. Oh, he's a gentleman until you say you're a vegetarian and then he sends you pictures of fried chicken and, and barbecue <laughs> ribs and, and stuff. Yeah. Like are you that. serious? Man. Yeah. yeah. That's so, too, wow. Man. wow, that is a, a massive difference there. Yeah, exactly. See, and what did Phil say? The demonstrative difference, and there we see it. You know what I mean? Uh, not, but the, still, the funny thing step. was was how Digital Foundry was like. Uh, it remains to be seen if uh, this will be the way that uh, how it happens with every game. 
you know what I mean? Like, it's like they're doing everything not to not say that it's, yeah. you know, better on the Xbox. Oh, you're talking at the end of that comparison video where they're like, well, yeah. we're, we, we got to see, we got to do more comparisons with more games before yeah. we see what the pro <laughs> can truly shame. do and stuff. Well, if you like, like if, if you look at their Forza 7 versus uh, Gran Turismo Sport comparison, it's a joke. First of all, they compared to the PC version of Forza Motorsport 7, which although it's even it's 4K, there's no HDR on that version. Mm -hmm. So, like, <laughs> it's really uh, it's really interesting to kind of uh, to see them kind of stretch on that one. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, uh, not only then, that, but when you look at they they used the MX-5, the convertible, right, to show the interior. Yeah. Now, the thing is with the the Forza MX-5. It was the higher tiered MX-5, um, so it had the the leather seating. It had like the the big screen in the middle for like navigation and stuff like that. Where they were comparing it to the MX-5 on um, Gran Turismo uh, Sport with the cloth interior and stuff. And and you know cloth has more there there's more detail in cloth than than leather. Leather has a shine to it, and a lot of times the shine will you know, take away from that detail within that area. And and they were comparing it and they were giving the edge to Gran Turismo Sport because of the way the interior looked, the interior textures. And they were comparing cloth to leather, which to me was absolutely asinine. I, I couldn't believe they were doing it like that. Yeah. Now, with, with that... <laughs> I was, no, I was gonna say, with that being said, Don, do you do you see what I'm saying with that? And they should have they should have picked a car that was kind of like the same version on see, both. I'm, I'm not a fan. You know, you guys all know how I feel about Digital Foundry, right? And, and, there, and these are just another reason why, right? I don't, I don't care if they're talking about my favorite platform in a good light or a bad light, right? Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not looking at it from, from an even kill. Like, Xbox just talking about one particular thing. Let's talk about a car that they cherry-picked, right? Did they intentionally just cherry-pick that car? That car. Right, and find particular things that you don't even see when you're driving the game. I'm actually shocked that you even put those details in the game. For example, they were talking about the uh, the windshield wiper uh, <laughs> squirter, right? Yeah, the, the yeah the, yeah, the water they're showing the difference squirter. on that. Broken like, down like that, damn. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I have not ever played a racing game and ever seen those ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the fact that they were able to find it was. That was more impressive than their <laughs> analytics, right? But the, but that's the thing is they they cherry picked very particular things and they left other details out. And what they're doing is everyone else thinks they're including everything, but they're not really. I mean, I look at you know, and I I, I wouldn't want to compare GT in an unfair light, right? But one of the things that always impressed me about motorsport is you can actually see the tires change and deform and deflect. Uh, under real world physics, as you're driving, you can stop anywhere in the game and find that. The bigger so you'll, the tire you'll see is, see tire burn, or are you talking like weight shifting? Where the, the weight, weight shifting of the tire, the tire actually will compress like like a, a ball, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it'll it'll do that. Bigger the tire, the more noticeable it is, right? So, like an open world car, if you had really small rims, you can see all that sort of stuff. And and usually it's detail you don't see when you play the game, but it's there. That's super impressive to me. But they left all that detail. Out. So, so that leads me to believe I'm like, does the other game actually even have that? Yeah. Does it or doesn't, right? Th those sort of things. Um, they don't talk about uh, image-based lighting, which makes everything in the world look planted. If you look at both of the games run side by side, right? They make them sound like they're processing everything pretty evenly, right? But there's a visual difference you're seeing on the screen when you're looking at their comparison. And image-based lighting is one of those things that allows everything in that seen to look like it belongs there right instead of things kind of hodgepodge and you know cobbled together you know what i mean it makes it look like everything actually belongs and what it does is it basically i, I call it a poor man's version of ray tracing but basically it takes light from the skybox and then projects it onto the images in the actual game environment it's that you're playing baked on lighting is what they used right it's not a true baked on light lighting. It is dynamic. So what, that's the reason why you're seeing those differences as the, the skybox changes. Okay. You, you're okay. But I mean, on GT Sport, they use baked lighting. The, I'm pretty sure they probably do uh, on, on that. And so it's, it's, that's the reason why everything yeah. just, you know, it looks shaded, right? It looks good, right? But it doesn't look like 
it belongs. It almost looks like certain things are kind of floating there. Does yeah, that make the, sense? The, the the thing I got from from GT yeah. Sport, and this is this is just a regular gamer talking about it. It just looks like. First of all, there is way less content uh, than Forza Motorsport 7, all right? And and Digital Foundry did say this, like, maybe twice in their comparison video, but I, I think they really needed to hammer that, down, like, home more. They all say how many cars there are on GT Sport in comparison to Forza Motorsport, because Forza Motorsport has over 700 compared to, like, 160 on, on GT Sport. That right there, to have all those cars, to have all those renders and all that good stuff... That, that takes a lot of freaking work right there. Um, but when I look at GT Sport, when I look at the gameplay, some parts look really, really good. And then other parts look like cardboard cutouts of things. And, and this is while going full speed down the track. I can literally point stuff out in GT Sport as I'm watching the gameplay go by and stuff. And I'm like, damn, that's like a cardboard cutout of a. Should have used right some there. of my GT Sport gameplay. I got a ton of it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, it maybe looks so you said, bad. You said that to me. I'll have it on like, next week's uh, show or something. I'm like, anything. That's just what the game looks like. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just, they're like, you must have doctored. I'm like, no, that's just how it is. I was like, when I played Horizon Zero Dawn and I recorded some of that dialogue and had it up on my review. People are like, "Would you do the voices sound horrible?" I'm like, "I didn't do anything." That's what the <laughs> voices the way it is. Like. <laughs> but, but horrible. Yeah, I remember, crap, you, you did cherry pick that one a little bit. Yeah, what? I think I cherry picked it. I just I just was recording like um, I always <laughs> record like an hour or so of a game when I'm playing it. Gotcha. Um, just to have it, and so that was within like the hour that I decided to record. It wasn't like I heard that because I I couldn't have heard heard it and then went back to it. So it was like that happened, and then it was just it was horrible. It was like some of the worst voice acting ever and it sounded bad too. I couldn't even finish that game because the voice acting was so bad in that game. Yeah, a lot of people say that too. A lot of people are like, uh, man, it was really bad. Like for me, the combat was just kind of uh, bl yeah, bad too. Like but either. Pretty game though. I mean, they can always say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of pretty, let's let's move on to the next subject. And uh, Aaron Greenberg, Mikey Barra, a bunch of people from Xbox have been tweeting out that the marketing for the Xbox One X starts tomorrow, guys, with Finally. a new official commercial. Only and, two uh, weeks before release. That's not bad. <laughs> so it starts tomorrow. Hey, they did, they did have that, that Taco Bell promotion, though. Oh, yeah. That, I that can't eat true. Taco Bell, though. So Gave a lot of people diarrhea. But anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when, you think, when you think diarrhea and Taco Bell, think Xbox, Xbox. One X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> It's not a bad marketing <laughs> scheme there. But, yeah, I know. Oh, oh snaps! You, you you brought up a good point. You know, two two weeks from from launch and everything. They they are um they are putting out the new commercial during the the season premiere of The Walking Dead and Sunday Night Football. Now, with that being said, Microsoft usually when it comes to marketing, they'll bust out the gate really quick, show a bunch of stuff, and then eventually like crickets within I don't know maybe two weeks time, like you said, like they. They do really good in the beginning, and then all of a sudden they just kind of like fall off a cliff when it comes to marketing. So with that being said, um, oh snaps, are you excited to see this new commercial and how they're going to market the Xbox One X coming like now through like the holidays? Um, do you think that they might have learned their lesson with marketing? And like, do you think they're going to stretch this out even longer than the holidays? Keep it going. What do you think they need to do? When it comes to marketing for this system. Well, first of all, it's going to be on during the premiere of Walking Dead. So right there, that alone is a prime spot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so excited for the Walking Dead returns. Oh, oh yeah. Yay. So, Ezekiel? and you know, we're, we're, what? No, King Ezekiel. That's, that's my, that's my dude right there. That's your dude. That's um, dude. So with it being two weeks away and the holidays are coming up i mean the xbox one x the marketing is going to help but it's going to be the word of mouth from the gamers in the community that are really going to make it go and i mean th they're the reason why the xbox one x pre-order sold out in the first place it's not the marketing we don't we don't need the marketing it's going to help but they have thousands upon thousands of consumers behind the product um you know so throwing some marketing out there and you know helping you know boost the talk about it but the holidays are here. They're upon us. So it's not really needed, um, you know, in my opinion. You, you can throw some marketing out there. It's a great primetime spot to have the marketing. 
and mm -hmm. it'll open more people's eyes. But if anybody wants the Xbox One X, they already know about it and they're already planning to get it. Um, so, well, what you about, know. But what about that casual market? There's, there is a casual market out there that does have... They're probably uh, going to... Get an Xbox One S. But there's there's a casual that have big wallets though. There they are there are casuals well, out there. You know what? Look at look at my mom with buying like add-ons to games that never die. And those like, casuals probably <laughs> watch Walking Dead, and that's all they're gonna need. Boom, done. Ooh, ooh. boom. So like, what I'm saying, Aaron Greenberg and and the Xbox division, they they started this whole kind of grassroots campaign. They tried to do it with like Recore, um, Quantum Break to a certain extent. You know, a bunch of, like, gaming titles, and it didn't necessarily work out too well for them. That that kind of word of mouth that you're talking about, but you you feel like with the Xbox One X and this piece of hardware, that the marketing will be good in the key places that they're doing it, but that grassroots will actually help with the hardware? What? About the grassroots? I'm Gra sorry. <laughs> no, well, they've, they've been trying to do that whole word of mouth thing for a while. Like, um, you know, a, a lot of it was software, right? Uh, you, you look Do at you like that the, the Xbox One X is already sold out. They don't need to. If people are gonna buy anything as far as Xbox goes, anywhere they go, that's gonna be the first thing they see the new product. Yeah. So they don't really need to market it that much. Mm -hmm. It's it's gonna be marketed throughout the holiday season and they're on. That's just my opinion. They do, they do hit the holiday seasons hard. I, I will I will definitely everybody give them that. Does. That's the best time to really learn about new products too. That is true. That is true. So, all right. So we got we got the grass grassroots campaign with a check for O oh snaps. Uh, let let's go to Pred. Pred, what what do you think they need to do for the market? First of all, are you excited to see the new commercial? And and what do you think they need to do in terms of marketing with the Xbox One X? Do you think they should stay with what they've been doing this generation, or or do something different? Oh, they definitely do something different. I'm, I'm hyped for the commercial, but I, I see that they're kind of teasing it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's still in line with the um, Feel the Power stuff they did a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we're going to see any new gameplay footage or something that we've never seen They're going to show Halo 6. No, I'm just They're just going to show the, yeah, <laughs> that gonna show awesome. the console, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm glad they're starting to market this now. I mean, I think it should have come maybe a couple of months ago. They kind of ramp it up a little bit, but they've got a good time slot for it. They got Walking Dead stuff going on. They got NFL football um, for people who aren't watching The Walking Dead. But I think so far this generation, the most of the marketing has become it's come from people like us. You know, the 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 not casual markets, the hardcore. Like we're hyping this console up, and we're the ones who went out and pre-ordered it. They do need to kind of kind of push a little bit more towards the casuals because those are the ones who actually drive the market as mm -hmm. far as as much as being sold. Um, Especially like when it comes in terms of what you know, what PlayStation is doing and what Xbox is doing, there are a lot of casuals who kind of just kind of sway either direction. So they need to kind of get that casual market to sway back to their side with new hardware and with uh, with new games. So um, I, I do I do see something that I have noticed this that it's like anytime there's a new marketing campaign from Microsoft, it's like it's like I don't know like a big deal. You know, like we ex we want this, you know, obviously, but we talk about it so much. But like when the PlayStation drops new commercials, no one discusses that. You know, it's like it's like we expect PlayStation because they, they have like a huge marketing budget, I guess, where they're always dropping commercials, always dropping. Like I I've seen that Gran Turismo sport commercial like a dozen times. Mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen more of that commercial than I've seen combined for uh, Forza, for the um Game Pass. I've seen more of that 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 freaking GT commercial than I have for anything I've seen on Xbox on TV anyway for the past I don't know three months maybe because wow. um, I've seen that commercial so many times. So it's like um, they they definitely need to ramp up their market. I know this is the time of year they typically are expected to do that, but what about mm -hmm. the other eight months, eight nine months out of the year? That is true. You know, that's where they're getting killed at. You know, it's like you know you have a good point. Um, and I want to cut you off for just a second. I feel like it's not necessarily the, the casual market that Xbox needs to go for. I think it's like the gamers in general, you know, especially on the PlayStation side. Because PlayStation does do a lot of marketing. All right. So, you know, you're saying, you know, the rest of the eight and nine months of the year. Um, 
you know, if PlayStation's doing all this marketing and, you know, they're doing really great sales, maybe Xbox really needs to hit that PlayStation market and, you know, kind of scoop some of them up because they can do it with the proper marketing. They should hire yeah. me and then I can do it. <laughs> you know but, just saying. But continue. I apologize. Um, I was about to say, I, I think that was about it. But it's, it's it seems like, like for the most of the year, it like you don't really hear much from Microsoft when it pertains to marketing as far as television goes. I see a lot more on Twitter. I see a lot more on, um, you know, just, you know, on their YouTube webpage and stuff like that than I do actually on TV. And they definitely need to kind of, you know, start tailoring a little bit more towards the casual, try and get some of those those PlayStation guys that flip-flopped over to the other side mm -hmm. to come back. Um, and um, it's just, you know, you're, they're expected to do this at this time of the year. It's it's yeah. the holiday season's coming up. They got a new console coming up. We should expect this from them. Yeah. It shouldn't be a big deal they drop commercials. They shouldn't have to announce that they're going to start doing marketing. That, that is true, it. man. They shouldn't have, like, yeah, I, I see exactly what you're saying with that. And um, not for anything, but when it comes to Sony and their marketing, you said about the Gran Turismo, but another thing is with their marketing deals, like even when you see a Star Wars Battlefront 2 commercial you're going to see the playstation logo at the end when you see the call of duty commercial you're going to see the playstation logo at the end so that even that makes it feel like there's even more out there when it comes to the playstation as well and that that right there in terms of marketing would would definitely be hard to go against like you would have to do uh marketing deals with other multi-plats and and right now i feel like sony has the multi-plat marketing deals on lock like they just they have all the big hits the the big hits that are coming down they the got road. soccer this year like only only commercial like even with this whole campaign they're about to do um from what the, the little teasers i've seen i think the only third party game that i've seen on there mm -hmm. was assassin's creed i thought i saw PUBG on there as well um for one of there those was teasers. Lock. they showed that they showed agent lock Really? I was all excited about it. Yeah, yeah. they're showing oh, Halo. Oh, okay. and they're showing like Halo War stuff, games that are already released, but like they're not showing, you know, the, and I guess um, Assassin's Creed, PUBG. I think were the other two games I saw, but I don't remember seeing Forza on there. I don't like. There's they're, they don't have marketing for anything. Even even PlayStation has the. I've seen their their um their soccer commercial a, mm. a billion times. You know. Now I will say I do see a lot of Madden commercials. For, for Xbox, um, but because they have the marketing rights for it. But mm -hmm. outside of that, like I really haven't seen much. So, for I Xbox. guess, Pred, the big question to you is: Should Xbox hire Oh Snap It's Mel? I, I think that's the big question. I will do door to door sales marketing <laughs> for them for the right price all year long, guys. All year. <laughs> They, they need to hire somebody, man. Because I mean, not saying Aaron Greenberg is doing a bad job, but like, you need to um, hire Mel. Not need to hire Mel. That's all. Mel. Mel. Well, I, I also, I, I have a take on this too. I think a lot of people um, maybe don't realize that Microsoft has sunk, uh, and maybe Don probably realizes this too. That Microsoft has sunk a lot of their resources in getting 4K content for the launch of this console, and the price of that would also have to be probably maybe at the cost of some marketing or some commercials or some games. Um, also, I want to say that this thing is is selling out anyway, yeah. so they don't even have to push it that much right now. Uh, I think you know they should push it uh, early next year, but as far as I'm concerned, if you go and look and try to buy this thing right now in the Microsoft Store, you're not getting it day one. You're getting it, they say, by November 30th now. Okay. Um, yeah, that thing's already selling uh pre-ordered well and, and selling great like i um I, I i do think that you know they're ramping up some commercials and stuff like that but it's kind of like if you have a product and you're going to release it on november 7th and you already know that all your shit sold out for that <laughs> why market all that it, money know. you know what i mean like I, I would wait a little bit like yeah get some commercials out there let people know about it and then they're going to be like i really want that but it's sold out. That's going to kind of drive things even harder. And then people are going to start seeing the comparison videos. And, you know, all of us are going to be doing videos and talking about it. And that's going to drive people to want it. Mm -hmm. It's like guerrilla tactics. And oh, I, I don't mind that. I do. They should do more marketing throughout the year. I, that I 100% agree with. Um, but I also realize that um, it's kind of give and take. When you come out with back to back consoles like that, the R&D process and the money involved. That's a lot of money. Uh, I can understand. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand why they're a little bit lax with some of the other stuff right now. So, I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, I'm excited to see what they have. I mean, if if 
if these guys like of of course Aaron's gonna he's gonna tease this stuff. I, I mean he's the head of marketing, and and this yeah. is you know his project and stuff like that. So he's gonna go out on Twitter. But to see the other people from the Xbox division also kind of like hyping this up, I do want to see what they have to offer. I do agree with Pred that it does look like that kind of like feel the power thing that we we have seen, you know, going into kind of like the unveiling, you know, through E3, all that good stuff. So I want to see if they do something different within this. And um, they have great spots. I mean, Microsoft's partnership with the NFL puts Xbox in a great position when it comes to marketing through football games. And then they do have that agreement with uh, the Walking Dead AMC, and they do have Xbox commercials within the Walking Dead. Now, this has been the usual, though. So I, I, I did kind of want to see them expand out more. Uh, catch other kind of like bigger groups within, uh, you know, you know, television and stuff like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I do also have to agree with crap. I mean, this, it's already sold out for now. Uh, there are people that want it. Um, these commercials could spark, you know, more people, which starts really building that hype up. And, uh, you know, a lot of people want what they can't have at the moment. It's, it's kind of like a human nature thing. I mean, uh, Nintendo knows about this, no doubt. They they purposely, um, you know, ship lower numbers to try to create more hype. And, well, they don't uh, intentionally do that. They just they just they intentionally do. Come, come they on, They underestimate. Man. No one, no company wants less money. They like money. Mm, <laughs> Nintendo, they, Nintendo's an odd <laughs> duck, dude. <laughs> they, they are odd, and, and they do. I think they do make decisions to make us all scratch our head. But you know. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know they like money. If they feel like they can sell through it or something, they'll they'll sell, they'll they'll pay the extra to get it produced. But they don't like warehouse and stuff. Um, that's not Nintendo's deal. They like to produce product, put it on the shelf as soon as possible, and not store it. So that's the reason why there was always short supply with with Nintendo. Hmm. That's why their systems cost what they are. They, you know, if you store a bunch of stuff, then then you either the the manufacturer takes takes the hit. Or the cost of the product goes up, so it's it's a, it's a balancing act on all that stuff. So nice, nice. All right, guys. Well, when it's all said and done, we have one more topic. Uh, we'll, we're gonna hit this real quick, and then and then we're gonna wind down because it is Saturday night, and I know the gamers definitely want a game. So uh, the last topic I'm gonna do is, of course, Visceral Studios, EA, uh, basically um, closing down Visceral. For people who don't know, they are the development team that um, developed uh, Dead Space, which is a game that a lot of people, I know at least a lot of my friends absolutely love that franchise. At least the first two, Dead Space 1 and 2, they thought were absolute like gems. And I, I actually, I really liked them as well. But the bigger thing here is that Visceral was working on an action-adventure Star Wars game with Amy Henning. Uh, for people who don't know who who Amy Henning is. He, she is the writer of um, Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, I believe. Right, guys? All three? I think he was. I think she was yeah. partially involved in the last one, too, right? She was supposed to well, be. Well, originally, and then they scrapped it. They kind of scrapped what did she they, had. And did stuff they like scrapped that. her whole script, or did they scrapped kind of... Because there's probably... Let's just be honest. There's probably part of what she she put into the game still in that game. We just don't know what it is. Yeah, I mean, there could be... The, I mean that that game was delayed a lot, so it, it's really you know it's hard saying what what was hers and what wasn't. But I mean, I mean, we could basically across the panel, we can basically say that from what she has done, at least with the first three Uncharted, she is a fairly talented writer when it comes to stories and games. Uh, any everybody agree with that or? Yeah. All right. She. I mean, she knew what she was doing. Like I always thought that was a good call. Because she would do a good game, and then uh, that she was working on a Star Wars game, and I thought that was awesome. Yeah, well, now that that project, uh, that game that they were developing, basically what they had done is scrapped, and they moved it over to EA Montreal. And yeah. what's going on with Amy Henning is a little more kind of like a mystery, not known. I've heard things that EA is trying is in discussions with her on possibly a, a position somewhere in ea but she's basically um from what i hear she's like free on the market so uh, not like that I though. Twitter and everybody's like doing giving well wishes and apologizing and stuff like that i don't i didn't really follow her before you know so i was just checking out what was going on and 
things that people were saying and, you know, yeah. reading up on it, basically. Also, they're give, giving her well wishes and stuff like that. So, yeah, so basically, basically the project. She's she probably done. Doing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's going to her retire, go to Fiji. Like, she's got to feel bad because the last two projects she's done, both she didn't get the seat to fruition, and uh, this one canceled. So basically six years or seven years of her life wasted. That is a great point. Well, Brad. I mean, I don't want to say wasted, but I mean, like, honestly, nothing it's not to, it's Nothing not good, to show so. for it, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day. Yeah, like, exactly. You put in all that hard work, and then all of a sudden, like, what what you've done was scrapped. Now, crap. I, I know. I know people have worked on multiple projects, like maybe six different games, and all of them been canceled. They've literally worked on six games and never had a release. Oh, so, man. like, but you know, is, so that, that does. That, that's not Amy Henning, though. She she did the first three Uncharted. She deserves I'm just saying, to have her project done. That does happen in the industry, and it hurts those people a lot. Like, it <laughs> makes them want to quit the industry. It really does. I got so you. I can, I can see where Amy's coming from, or where crap's coming from in regards to Amy. Well, I, I have I have more interesting questions than that. First of all, crap. How do you feel about EA shutting down uh, Visceral? Uh, how do you feel about the new Star Wars project going to EA Montreal? And where where do you think Amy is going to end up? Do you think uh, Xbox should start like talking to her people? What what, what do if you? If they're think, smart, man? they would probably bring her in on something. But uh, who knows? You know what I mean. Uh, closing visceral. I, I that's that's probably a mistake. It means you probably won't see a dead space anytime soon. That sucks um, right there, man. This Star Wars game that people were looking forward to, um, we won't see that till probably 2021 or something like that because it was already not slated to come out till 2019, and now they're starting over. So yeah, it's it's bad news all the way around. Um, it's 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 very unfortunate. You have to wonder what what the deal is with it. Uh, canceled games. That's you know it's part of the business. I know that people hate to hear that because we did get to see a little bit about this game. This is the problem, people, with announcing games too early, right? Mm-hmm. And people wonder why Phil does what he does, and it's not just a Microsoft problem. How many games get canceled? Like I know that people want to act like Sony and Nintendo don't cancel games, but they both do. And um, Sony's canceled games this generation, as has Microsoft. That's why you don't really announce them that early. Uh, you know that way people don't get their hopes up. How many people were like, oh, man, Scalebound, and now, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> even Crackdown, that game shouldn't have been announced until uh, probably 2015 or 20. Agree. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, you show the games over and over again. Like, look, Sony introduced The Last of Us 2 at, uh, what the hell was that, uh, their event uh, last year, right? Mm-hmm. So they, they announced it in 2016. That game's probably not coming out until 2019, 2020. So they're going to have to show more of that each and every year, you know, and eventually you're going to get burnt out on that, you know, um, sort of like No Man's Sky. Remember how they kept showing No Man's Sky? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, and then it ended up being like a, a big letdown. So, you know, I, I feel like it, it sucks. You know, anytime that they close down studios or cancel a game, I think it sucks. I do realize it's part of the business, but uh, it, it does suck, man. I'm not I'm not happy about it. I was looking forward to that game. Uh, and the fact that they that they closed it down uh, is just it, it's a bummer. And, and no, you know, I was looking forward to more. It sucks because you know what? They're the only company that can do Star Wars games. You know, that they is have true. They got contract. that agreement, man. And- yeah. And so it's like, while I'm looking forward to Battlefront, that's that campaign is going to be five to seven hours. I thought this would be a nice, like, cool Star Wars story. You know, like a full on single player kind of experience. You know. Yeah. Now it's like, if you want a single player Star Wars experience, uh, the best thing you can do is get KOTOR 1, and that's going to be one of the first games backwards compatible from the OG Xbox, so there you go. Yeah. Well, crap, here, here's the thing, and um, besides the haters out there for for you and your channel, we know, like, you, you talk to people within the industry and everything like that. Have you heard anything, rumors, rumors of rumors as to why, like, they're, uh, EA is doing this, why they're shutting down Visceral, well, I mean, why they're it wasn't... <laughs> There was different things going on, right? Like one of the things that like Kotaku had posted was EA wanted more of a uh, games as a service type deal, uh, loot boxes and this and the such. They wanted a Destiny type game, mm-hmm. uh, but in the Star Wars universe. Which hey, that sounds cool, right? Yeah. But that wasn't what that game was trying to be. So you know, trying to force that on them, eh, kind of kind of a bump situation. Sort of like how. You know, originally Donnie D and them were trying to force Fable Legends onto Lionhead, but they didn't really want to do that. Yeah. You know, 
Um, just, <laughs> I, I, I still think you need to have like single player experiences. Star Wars screams single player experiences, right? Like Battlefront, great, uh, looks awesome, but I think you need that i don't know why why don't developers just give a shit we want right we want a fable game give us a fable game right we want a, a mega man give us a mega man you know we want a fucking kotor game give us a kotor yeah, game what is, when you say single player star else. wars man that's all i'm thinking is kotor and how many yeah. people either want like kind of like a, a either kind of like a reboot of kotor or even a sequel but they want i that, would even take a remaster back, right? You know what? I'm I'm like at this point, it's like I'm gonna go back and play the original version on when it's backwards compatible because I used to play that game every year, no matter what. Um, you know, I don't play it all at once sitting. You know, like an hour before bedtime, I'll play. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, just because it's it was such a good game, such a good story. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like a, an amazing game, and it's like we don't get that anymore. I remember because they announced Swotor, which was a PC. It's like how do you go from Kotor one and two to a PC MMO? <laughs> you know? I just I want to um can you guys hear me? I don't know yes, if yes, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah. All right. So I just want to touch on what crap said. You know, uh, developers giving us what we want. The thing is like people always want more. Like they're never happy. So it would be pretty costly for them to kind of give us what we want, you know, all the time because I mean, look at it, but um maybe they can do more to get involved with the communities and see what people want and then kind of go from there whatever has like you know the most popular choice of things kind of like what they're doing like what microsoft's doing first of all like features with windows 10 features with xbox and stuff like that right where, yeah because where they're nobody's looking at happy. What, what is the most demanded and, and, and stuff like and they're trying to get those features kind of like put onto the system and stuff do that with like software and games yeah, they should because, I mean, obviously, like, people always want. They always want more. We can't always get what we want. Crap, I'm sorry. We I know that, but it's like people, people are willing to spend money on this stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's like we're the consumer, and, like, okay, it's like um, the consumer everybody, to wanted, us. <laughs> yeah, everybody wanted battle, didn't want, everybody wanted a Borderlands 3, right? But what did we get? We got Battleborn, okay? <laughs> it's like if people would just listen. You know, like, listen to what the fans are asking for. And that, I feel like that is a real problem, you know. Um, people want to play as Master Chief, not Locke. Sorry, K-Mega, but that's just how <laughs> it is. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and, and so they're going to fix that. I bet, like, Locke might, shouldn't even be in it or put him in a cutscene explaining why he's gone. And, or well, people who have you know? no emotional ties to Master Chief, people like me, where, you know, I came in late on the Halo series, so I don't have that emotional tie to Master Chief. So me, I don't really care who I play. I, I'm a fan of Locke. Um, but it's not like a make or break situation either there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean he was kinda of born out. I'm just saying like uh in terms of, of what these companies do, uh just, just put out the game, you know, take a take a take a little bit of a risk, put out the games that people are asking for, because there are a lot of games that uh, the majority of people really would want. You know, uh, Microsoft has a ton of IP under their belt where I can guarantee if they took a risk on some of those games, people would actually go out and buy them, you know, uh, and I, I hope to see that one day. You know, I, I think people would support and I don't even think they'd be an expensive game. Banjo-Kazooie, right? Make one of those. It doesn't even like those games don't take up super high budget, so you wouldn't even need a whole lot. But right now, platformers are big again and you have one of the best ones ever. But they yeah, could also, right? you know, do crowdfunding. I mean, I know a lot of people, like, they're like, oh, well, they're crowdfunding this or crowdfunding. But the gamers, if they want the game, they're going to help support it yeah. and crowdfund it. And that's kind of more of a way for them to solidify that we're serious that we want this. That yeah. is true. Look at Shenmue 3, right? Like, that's a super niche title, but it still made millions in crowdfunding. If you want to judge how people um, feel about the game, then do some crowdfunding. See how it goes, you know? Yeah. yeah, definitely. definitely. That's just how I, that's how I feel about it anyway. Like, and it sucks that we got to wait years and years for a proper Star Wars game. Um, as a Battlefront fan, right, think about this. I bought Bat Star Wars Battlefront 2 in 2005. Uh, I had it on PS2 and Xbox. That was, like, my first, like, competitive clan-type game. Um, and we used to always hope for Battlefront 3. Battlefront 3 is coming. Battlefront, we used to tell each other, Battlefront 3 is coming. What, what do you guys think about it? It took us 10 years to get a Battlefront 3, and it was called Battlefront 1, and they re, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I know how it is, you know what I mean? It's like people want it. And the funny thing was, was Battlefront 1 and 2 were the best-selling Star Wars games of all time, and it took us, still took us 10 years to get a, another one, right? 
Like yeah. that's a problem. Like the industry needs to listen. Like I still feel like uh, Sunset Overdrive Two with a co-op campaign and a team deathmatch multiplayer would sell millions from. Oh Microsoft. hell yeah! But hell yeah. do they believe in that? I don't. You know, I don't know. Well, dude, it's funny. The more and more that we talk about this, then the more and more with uh, the Xbox One X <laughs> and X enhanced games, the more and more we hear Sunset Overdrive. At least within. The Twitter community, even names like I, I, I haven't even seen. So they're not really regulars, uh, you know, within the community that I know of. Uh, there's been more and more talk about Sunset Overdrive. First of all, they, they, they want the 4K enhancement to the first one. And there's a lot of talk about people wanting, you know, a sequel. And there's a lot of times when it comes to uh, games like that, new IPs and stuff, the, the first one doesn't do that great. But the sequel will just knock look, it out of the park. The first, look at the first Uncharted, right? I don't think anyone really will argue that's... A it's a bad game, Don. You can God. say it. It's average. <laughs> yeah, but it, you know, like, it really was not... I didn't like it. I, you know, But I don't like any of the Uncharted, so that's... I'm, I'm kind of out. In, I liked Uncharted 2 a lot. Uncharted 3 was man. Uncharted 1, if you play it on the PS3, it's got these fucking controls where you got to use the fucking balance. Like, if you're walking across the yeah. log, you've got to balance your fucking controller. Right, like it's horrible. <laughs> it's not I, I, thought, good. I thought the aiming wasn't great. I, there was a lot of things. It just like didn't have its identity as, as a game, right? Yeah. But they hit their stride on the sequel, and, and and that's a perfect example. We have so many good games that have released on the X. Their first ones have been great. Sunset Overdrive, Rise. They can use them improvements, but it was still a good game, right? And you think about like, man, what the what are the potentials for those as sequels? And that's all Xbox gamers that have been here, Xbox One gamers have been since the start, are thinking about. is like, man, what if I can get that as a sequel? I mean, I would love to see them take that stride and, and go further with that. And You know what sequel we're getting? ReCore. <laughs> <laughs> the one everybody wanted. ReCore it, it, thing. ReCore is not a terrible <laughs> game, but it's super cheap. You know what I mean? So that's why they're... And they... Uh, it's like, I don't... And I get it, right? Like, they... I have a good feeling they're going to get a bigger budget if they do. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think it's like the first one was a proving grounds. I'm like, we're going to give you this budget. We want kind of this sort of level, you know, whatever the sales pitch was to Microsoft and vice versa. They're like, they're they're like, hey, Microsoft was like, yeah, here's our budget. It's two packs, two cartons of smokes. We got some natty light, (laughs) some Bud Light. Here you go. Uh, What can you make us for this? And they're like, here's Recore. And they're like, all right, bro. It's like, uh, you know, like to me, I like the idea of that game, but the whole core and they fixed a lot of it. I'll be honest with the update, but it's just like at that point, I've already kind of done with it. You know, um, maybe I could start over at a point with it. But for me, uh, out of all the franchises, man, I would rather have a rise to I'd rather have a sunset over to a quantum break to, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, just about anything. Give me a, a rare replay too. <laughs> oh man! Well, they, they, the only thing they could do with that is like add Nintendo games, and uh, I don't know yeah. Xbox, Microsoft, Xbox. They have been working on their kind of like business relationship with Nintendo like really hard. Yeah. The yeah. past couple of years, man, they're they are chummy, chummy right Heck now. Yeah. Which I'm looking forward to that new. Uh, <laughs> that new Mario game, man, that's coming out. So yeah, look out. So so is Mike. He, he said it right in our chat. Nice. Oh, is he? Yeah, he, he, he said I'm playing Mario on whatever next Friday or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, oh shit, that is next Friday. Oh wow, okay, yeah, so, <laughs> snuck up on you. <laughs> so, did, I mean, well, you know, Stranger Things I think starts in a few days, yeah. right, or yeah, next Friday as well. So that that is a yeah. binge watch right there, man. As soon I know, as right, dude. I was just saying, like, here's a funny story, right? I was late on the late on getting on that, right? Everybody was saying how great it was, and one night I couldn't sleep, and so I just clicked it on. And I was like, I'll watch an episode. I, I watched the whole series that <laughs> night. And I didn't go to sleep, and I was like, oh shit! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just growing up, like since since I was kind of I was born in the '80s, and I like the Goonies and stuff. So to me, it really kind of appealed to that. And so I yeah, I'm, the I'm, Goonies. I'm, Sorry, I, exactly. Who doesn't love the Goonies? That's Xbox. That was awesome. Well, Xbox. Oh, you don't no. like the Goonies? He's a piece of shit. He's, oh no! <laughs> no wow! Yeah, wow! Yeah, guys. Oh, here we go. Uh, but nah, yeah, I was never the biggest like Goonies fan, man. There were there were oh, other come on, there dude. were other movies I, I liked, man. I was we should big, make him do the truffle shuffle. I, I was big, he should. All right, check this out. I was big Karate again. Kid, man. I, I was huge. 
Karate Kid. Karate Kid was good too, but I mean, dude, the Goonies was all about like kids like exploring and yeah, but you know, like doing all, their own see, thing. Here's man. the thing. I, I I took karate when I was younger, around around that time and stuff. I was all karate, like everything. All right. So karate kid, like all, all that good stuff. I wasn't like a big kind of karate like, bot. explorer or anything like that. Oh, uh, see, I used to pretend that when, I, when I was a like kid, that. when I was a kid, I used to pretend that, the, that I was exploring and stuff, you know, like treasure maps and pirate. That stuff always fascinated me. So um, naturally, I, I really liked that. You know, it just like that was one. Of, it's still one of my favorite movies. Uh, yeah. So nice. You should nice. get on the ball, <laughs> Xbox. Crap, you gotta go metal detecting. We'll grab bicycles and go down. I have one. (laughs) What? Wait, you're that guy in Florida with a metal detector? (laughs) I I have one and I found some good shit. I'm just (laughs) saying. Awesome. (laughs) Yeah, I'm 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 way ahead of you, Mel. Crap, like, just I, because you said this. that, we are now officially moving to Florida. Now, thank you, I appreciate that. Man. Hey, we've got beaches here, so that's the, you know how much stuff people you lose it all the time in the beaches, man. Yeah, you see, like people lose rings, they lose fuck everything here, man. You I know, know what I mean? Spoons here in Connecticut. Yeah, so. we have spoons. <laughs> fucking syringes. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look for any of them. I'm gonna take that as an insult, <laughs> man. Hey, I got a bottle cap. Woo! You know, like no, it's like you find like good shit here like uh if you just like go around on like some of the beaches and stuff man you'll find uh all kinds of stuff like i found i found rings before i found uh you know uh, coins all kinds of shit like the beaches is where it's at yeah nice nice well guys i i did i did promise our special guest we would go two hours it is two hours yeah i told him i was like i can't do those three hour things (laughs) my ass can't take it Like I said, I, I try to tell Mooch. I try to tell Mooch when it when it came to the training, man. I I gotta be his best pupil when it comes to like hosting a podcast and and other things on social media and stuff. I I have really I told been... Mooch when he brought back Crossfire. I was like, I'll do it. I was like, no three hour Crossfires, man. We got to get the hell out of there after. Two hours, man. <laughs> and it, when it hits that one fifty nine mark, I, tw- I I sent him a DM on Twitter of. Uh, somebody like it's time or whatever. <laughs> We're waiting. You know what I mean? like, I, and he does that the same shit to me on Wednesdays too. So it's like you know, I want to get the hell out of there. You know, it's like, and it's not. It's not because I don't like it. It's just because you know I'm sitting here and my ass hurts. Uh, you know, I want to. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fidgeting in my chair right now. I need to stand up for a while. Yeah. That that is the truth. I remember the first time I did Crossfire, man. It was like a three hour marathon. <laughs> exactly, man. I was like, exactly. I told, I told Mooch, so now I, I rein him in a bit. I'm like, dude, let's just c- cut it to two. C- 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 calm down, Mooch. <laughs> yeah. But, yo, guys. <laughs> uh, when it gets going, man, it's crazy, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. And and with the personalities, and I I, I, I think it's the same way here on Next. The difference the difference of personalities and uh, people who want to express their opinions and who are so passionate about gaming. I, I think when it comes to all our podcasts, we – the, the panels are filled with those types of people, and we always want to get, like, our, our thoughts and our opinions out there, man. And we could probably do a continuous podcast with everybody put together, like, Monday through Sunday, 24-7, <laughs> man. There's a lot of them out there, man. But you know what the funny thing is? Is, like, each of them brings something different and something mm-hmm. cool. And I, I listen to most of them. Uh, you know, a lot of times I'll go back and listen, like, on the way to work because I drive. I have to drive over an hour to work, so it's like – I, a lot of times I'll chill to uh, to the podcast and stuff. So, yeah, it's always good. And it's always interesting to get uh, some of the different people. Like, I, I like, uh, you know, Mel brings a good take and Predator. And, of course, the Don, you know, his smart ass is, like, bringing the take of a developer. Good guys, though. Like, I talk to Don actually quite a bit sometimes in DMs about stuff if I'm confused on something. So That's, that's a secret. Not like, anymore. Best, I didn't best, say, the, I didn't say that Don specifically. Is playing, is playing I'm not saying game. that Don is... <laughs> I'm not saying I'm just saying if I'm confused on a technical thing, sometimes Don will help me out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying like he's giving me like any kind of secrets or anything. He's just saying, hey, Don, what's this mean? He'll help me out. But <laughs> the, the, the best thing with the Don uh, is either playing Forza or, or playing Destiny with him. That it, it is an experience in a half doing a nightfall with Don. He does the same thing that O Snaps used to do when I first started playing games with her you'd be like all right guys let's get together and and we're gonna take this left over here don's like five rooms ahead of you over to the right and you're supposed to be going left he's like oh don't worry guys i got it no you can't stop won't stop (laughs) (laughs) that's normal (laughs) 
But anyways, guys, <laughs> yo, crap. It was an absolute pleasure, man. I had a blast having you on the show. As usual, I'm going to say it as, as I said it many times before. You are always welcome on. I, I hope to have you on again. You are our most frequent special guest, and I, I really do appreciate it, man. Uh, For sure. Next time, I'm going to make sure I get some of my gameplay. Oh, up. hell yeah. Hell Did he yeah. even ask you? <laughs> Huh? Uh, no, he didn't. I, and you know what? I, I forgot about it because I. What, what's interesting is today actually was like a, a long day at work for me. So I got home and then I grabbed something to eat. And then I was like, I, I took like a 30 minute nap and then it was time to, to do the show. So I was like, all right. You know what I mean? So I was like, I hopped in here. That's why I asked him in DM. I was like, what time does the show start again? And I was like, want to make sure I had enough time to just catch a quick nap because I was fucking exhausted. Dude, you do. So, you do a lot. I, st- I, I did pretty good, I think, considering I was pretty tired. So. Yeah, not bad, man. I didn't I didn't know you were sleepy at all. So uh Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sleepy, man. I'm just exhausted. You know what I mean? Like I've like like weekends uh, I work a lot, so mm-hmm. um yeah, it's it a little bit difficult. Like that's why uh on weekends, like on my, my channel, everything is like it, the, you know what I mean? Like uh, sometimes if there's breaking news I can pop in, but weekends are harder to do that, which there's less that breaks on the weekends anyway. Yeah. So my weekend my weekend videos are pretty much set like friday that way i can work and then you know plus i got mnc mornings and stuff like that so we're giving away an xbox one x by the way well see that's i, I was I'm going i was going in like a, a 40 year old with a comb over we got to get those plugs in yeah. you are the special guest crap you get to start it off man you said an xbox one x and that's on what show? yeah we're giving uh mnc mornings uh it's not even specifically for the show but uh, i mean yeah it is for the show because we use the patreon and stuff Mm -hmm. um so people actually kind of did that and we're giving back you know what i mean it's like we use the patreon to support like the giveaways and stuff and to get j-dubs good equipment and we got an xbox one x scorpio edition and we're giving that away there's a gleam uh they were giving away it's always in the links of uh all my videos now uh there's 16 yeah there's 16 ways to enter uh, sorry, it's only U.S. and Canada because we looked into doing it other places, but it was like three hundred dollars to ship. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Damn. yeah, yeah, it was it was bad because like, trust me, I realize there's a lot of fans in the U.K. and Australia and stuff. It was like three hundred dollars. We looked into it. It's like very expensive, um, and we just couldn't do it right now. We hope to uh, eventually, maybe like next year, do some more giveaways and be able to include those people. But yeah, uh, we're definitely giving it away, and it's going to be. Uh, pretty cool. It actually lucked out because what happened was I pre-ordered my Xbox One X off of Amazon. Um, that was the first one because they were the first ones to open it up. Mm-hmm. And then I pre-ordered mine when they went live on Microsoft Store because I know Microsoft Store delivers the same day mm-hmm. um, that it releases. And I experience was the Amazon. So I was covered either so, way. And I told Moots that. And then we were like came up with the Amazon idea. One is actually Microsoft Store through Amazon. So it's actually coming straight from Microsoft. Is yeah, it? I, I checked on the same thing. Um, so, oh, okay. So, yeah. It's, well, well, it ended up working out good because I had two. And we were like, I was like, well, I can cancel one. And then we came up with the idea to do the giveaway. Um, so, yeah, now the other one's getting given away. And so it's going to be it's gonna be awesome. And I'm looking forward to whoever gets that. Hopefully somebody that uh, really deserves it and wants it, you know. Nice, nice. That that is an awesome giveaway. It's it's, <clears throat> and we're doing MNC mornings tomorrow morning, eleven a.m. on Mooch's channel. I haven't seen Mel or Xbot there lately. <clears throat> oh, what what do you what? <laughs> what, what, what? I've been working my ass off, I know. <laughs> like fifteen hours a day, and uh, I'm actually I uh, have today and tomorrow off because I got a sick day today, and tomorrow's the twins' birthday, so I will definitely stop in because we're gonna do something for them a little bit later. But you'll see me then. Awesome. Yeah. I'll tell him happy birthday. I will do that. I'll be like, little, the crack little crackers are turning yeah. 10 years old, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, hey, crap gamer, the crap gamer, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the crap gamer. <laughs> nice, nice. But I appreciate it, man. I always have fun with you guys. It's always a good time. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely come back more often now, you know, just uh, to, to shoot the shit with you guys and, and talk with everybody. Actually, the chat was pretty nice. You know, you get a couple people that are assholes, but for the most part, and he had Mikey Barra here too, so that was good. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still questioning if it was real or not, though. Like, always, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the guy, you, if you want somebody to get here, some concerns, and I felt like mine weren't fanboy concerns; they were legit. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I consider myself a hardcore Xbox dude. Like 500 games, I buy all the hardware. Um, they should really kind of <laughs> take into consideration what people like me do and want. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I don't think they could do. The PC stuff, all they want, just give me the option not to play with them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> great, come together, Unity candles, but not for me because I'm not going to do that. You know, I don't want to. So, 
Nice, nice. Yeah, I like. Yeah. I, I'm still questioning if it was the real Mike or or whatever. But no, that was that was Mike. All right, cool, cool. Uh, I no, did, but I didn't do my impression then. <laughs> I did. I did play Overwatch with him, man. He is he is a hardcore over. Well, he, he used to be before PUBG. It was a hardcore Overwatch, and we actually our mains were the same. Like we we were both picking Pharaoh and stuff like that. Real real cool guy to game with, man. He is serious about the game when you're when you're playing and in the party. Like he he talks all about the game, so aw- awesome, yo! Thank you, uh, Mike, for dropping in. Um, Predator, man, what do you got going on? And why don't you let the chat know where they can get a hold of you, dude? Oh man, I've been playing a lot of PUBG and uh, Ghost Recon lately, trying to nurse this knee back to health. But uh, I'm gonna try and do my podcast tomorrow. I know I said that last week, but then I had that sort of thing, so I was kind of out of it. But uh, tomorrow morning before the Mooch and Crap show, uh, 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, I will have my live podcast, the Xbox After Party. Um, Thursdays, I do the Shop Podcast with PTK Blam. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Xbox Live, uh, PlayStation 4, Predator underscore H2OS. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Nice, nice, man. And uh, – Let's save the best for last. So we'll we'll take the Don next. Yo, Don, what is going on? Don. Don for last. <laughs> I got I gotta mess with him because he wasn't here last week. <laughs> oh man. Like I, I think I probably out of all the regulars, I probably show up the most outside of you, bot. <laughs> um that being said, the best way to follow me, uh there's a link below. Uh you can follow all of us there. Um, that sort of thing. And my gamer tag is very similar. It's the Don Space KTR. Um, and then, you know, if everyone can just, just thank Mike for stopping by, man, that that's a huge yeah. deal. Yeah. Like he does not have to do that. You know, those guys deal with a lot of crap from like the anti fans of Xbox and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It, yeah. it, it goes a long ways. Just to kind of show them that you appreciate when they do stop by, uh, any podcast really. Yeah. Uh, I know Mike's been doing the rounds and just, just show them that you care. It, and his Twitter handle, I think is. Xbox, Xbox quick. Xbox, uh, quick. quick. Uh, so QW. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So definitely, just you know, just hit them up. Just say thanks for stopping by. Next, yeah, definitely, um, man. If you if you want those guys to do that more often, and they don't have to, uh, just show me you appreciate it. And you know then, what's cool and, is he he was by he went he came by uh, MNC Mornings last Sunday and also did Xbox Nation as well. So yeah. he he does make the rounds, man. Like mm-hmm. these Xbox dudes get around and they listen and to the feedback and stuff like that. And I think that that's really important uh, that they listen to the gamers. Cause like I said, we're the ones that kind of, that they should kind of cater to a bit and listen to our concerns a little bit. Like, I'm not like you MFers, you better do this and this, you know, it's just very, you know, Hey, I play on console. I prefer to play just with console people. Um, I don't want to play against a keyboard and mouse. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> You yeah, know, I, but, I think we, you know, you definitely, um, I mean, you, no. you put it out there exactly how, how you felt. Uh, I think we all did the same thing and it was, it was respectable. It was honest. I mean, we're, we're passionate gamers. We're passionate console gamers. And it, it's cool that like, like you said, the people within the Xbox division, you have Mikey Barr coming and checking us out on next, you know, MNC, uh, Xbox nation stuff like that. And, and they're hearing what we're saying and we're not saying anything uh, yeah. you know, derogatory Not or me, they're, yeah. they're genuine concerns, man. Yeah. Just like with the Halo stuff, man. I like Halo. I want to make sure that they, uh, they continue to, I, I, because I like Halo Gears and Forts is why I buy Xbox, you know, mm-hmm. I buy Nintendo for Mario, uh, Mario Kart, Zelda, those types of games. You know what I mean? If they were just like not coming out with those, I probably wouldn't buy it. You yeah. know, uh, with PlayStation, I like Uncharted. That's why I buy PlayStation 4. You know, it's like I like those games. So the fact that well, I used to like SOCOM a lot too, and then they kind of, <laughs> that just you know what I mean? Like Sony though. does that. <laughs> yeah, they just like well, some of their games just do disappear. So, but anyway, I gotta we gotta go because I yeah, gotta go, definitely, so. <laughs> definitely. And I, I like I said, I saved the best for last. Uh, a surprise to me, the rest of the panel, and hopefully to the chat. Uh, oh, snaps was not peddling <laughs> cookies tonight and joined us live. Yo, oh, snaps. <laughs> Um, why don't you let people know where they can find you? You you know the deal. Alrighty. Um, yeah, I, I've been peddling a lot of cookies, so I needed a break from it. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at girlskingame22. 
Um, I do want to let everybody know because I don't know when I'll be on the show again. And it's been a pleasure being on and hanging out with you guys, especially you crap. Cause I didn't know you're going to be here up until like a day ago. That's how busy I've been. I haven't even looked at the chat. Um, <laughs> So I will be doing a 24-hour uh, live donation stream for the Connecticut Children's Medical Center November 18th. So if you guys can go subscribe to my channel, it will be on YouTube. If I reach my 10K goal, I am shaving my head. I'm going to cry and be really oh, yes. sad. But I'm going to shave my yes. head bald live, okay? If I hit a 5K goal, I'm going to shave the side. Can I do it with the clip? Can I, can I will I let you do that. Oh, I will let you do that. Indeed. Guys, you, you guys, guys will be able to watch Xbox shave my head. Do you got some wigs ready? <laughs> uh, actually, I have a girl at work who's going to go wig shopping with me. Oh, yeah. She's, um, she's special. It's covered. So I know I know that you know it's going to be a hard uh, goal to reach, but it's definitely doable. And I'll do anything for the kids. And you know the hair will go grow back and mikey barrow said he might stop by just to uh see that happen so we'll see what happens that you would guys be good yeah so yeah. how much do we need to legally change xbox name to jennifer oh what? my god like it's only <laughs> like 150 dollars. i think that would be yeah. so cool what? yeah Hold on. why is my name jennifer like what yeah <laughs> I, mean, I just want to know what 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 is our goal so we can change xbox name to jennifer i'm just saying oh um we'll we'll go with um let's say 8k <laughs> okay Oh, hold on, you, you're putting that below shaving your head? No, no, it's got to be at least. Hey, my double. hair is more important than you. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> at, least, at least the name still begins with a J. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, guys, check out Coffee Casuals and Consoles on Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. It is awesome. Actually, it's 1030, but whatever. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure, guys. I am so happy I got to make it to the show tonight. So thank you for having me. Yes. Nice. And. and like I said before, the gamers got a game. It is Saturday night. I want to give a huge, huge special shout out to, of course, the moderator of the year, Mr. UK Dazarus, who is always ready with the links to Twitter from everybody on the panel, our special guests. Uh, he gives out a bunch of great information about the show during the show, and that is why he is not only the moderator of the year, but he, he is one of my close friends in social media and, and just in life in general. So, yo, huge, huge shout out to Mr. UK Dazarus out there and everybody else in the chat. Guys, thank you for, for hanging out with us live and for anybody who's watching this video afterwards and, and couldn't make it. Um, we definitely appreciate the support of the show. Uh, you guys inspire us to come together every Saturday and give you the most entertaining, most informative gaming podcast that we can possibly do. And, um, Thank you guys so much, but it is Saturday, like I said, and as I say, at the end of every show, we will check you out next Saturday on the next podcast. Have a great weekend, everybody. Later. Later.